Casino right here in Los Angeles. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Live at the Bike, brought to you by the Bicycle Casino in Los Angeles, California, the first and only webcast of Real Action Cash Game Poker. My name is Martin Hanson. I'm here with the Friar Tuckman. How are you doing tonight, Dave? I'm good. How are you? My friend, Dave Tuckman. He's here. And uh, tonight we're doing our Friday night game, uh, and we're going to be doing it with a little bit of a twist tonight. It's the VIP night. It used to be best bluff of the night. Now it's going to be the very important play of the night. Right. Basically, pretty much the player of the night gets an award. And right. what's that award? Well, it's going to be a couple of Paul McCartney tickets. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So again, it's a combination of, we'll see how it moves along, best play or a combination of best plays. Right. Not necessarily the bluffs, because a lot of times, you know, the person who's been trying to bluffing the most has lost the most money. Right. And, just kind and of it's not necessarily out. the person who wins the most money. No, absolutely not. Just the best play of the night. Best play much. of the day, you know, lay down, uh, you know, a... Uh, Maybe a, a maybe a bluff, right? Maybe a big call. Exactly. Something hey, like could that. Could be all, all sorts of things. So ten twenty no limit tonight. Thousand dollar minimum buy-in. And uh, before we get to the table, oh, I, I have to wish happy birthday to my nephew Carter. Happy birthday, buddy. A um, couple days late, um, but uh, happy birthday. I think he, he's ten years old and he's really cool. And uh, I, I think he'd actually kick all of these guys' butts in oh. poker without a doubt. And I also want to say hi to Logan. And everybody else back in New York. And I'll see you guys over Christmas. All right. Well, that's enough of that. Let's yes. get to the table. Right. Let's do it. Let's go around and introduce the table here. Why don't we do that? Okay. Well, we're playing. What are we playing here? No limit. 10, 20 blinds. That's right. Seat one, we've got World Series of Poker bracelet winner Tommy Huffnagel. Uh, he won the World Series in 1998. Won it for uh, Stud High Low. Yep. Seat two, we've got Amir Gazabi. Uh, local businessman, pretty solid poker player. Seat three, we've got Action Joe Win. Action Joe. Yeah, there he is. Seat four, we've got Corporation Mike, who uh, he certainly doesn't shy away from action. Laggy, laggy, loose, aggressive player there yeah. in seat four. Seat five, we've got Freddie. That's not Freddie Deeb, <laughs> but uh, Freddie nonetheless. Seat six is empty right now, but it is locked up. We'll get somebody in there right away. Wow, seat seven. A treat for everybody. At seat seven, we've got Carlos. Carlos, yeah. I think Carlos makes Jesus look tight. Right, right. Uh, seat eight, we've got Maxim, and we like to call him Max. His name is Maxim Aparian, and uh, he just goes by Max. New timer to the live at the bike. I got a live And seat nine, we've got Mo. The ever lovable Mo. Yes. So let's hop into the game here now, people who are unfamiliar with the show. Um, the uh, brown chips are $10 chips. Quarters, uh, purple chips are $25 chips. White chips are $100 chips. 10, 20 blinds, so 20 to call here. He doesn't know anyone here. No. You guys will see that. He doesn't know anyone. I know. You know him, right? And here we go with the first hand. Now, we either have an, uh, <laughs> we have a straddle here in seat number four. Yeah, that's straddled by, uh, st straddled by Corporation Mike. Called in two spots, so we've got already a hundred twenty dollar pot. That's right, deuce, deuce seven here on the flop, and, and look it looks that. like Mike's got queen deuce. Yeah, <laughs> and now he's actually going to bet, Dave. We got on him all last week about how he just wouldn't. You know, he's a loose aggressive player. He'll bet flops that miss him, but he seems to check big hands that don't miss him. Now, now none of these players have anything, so Joe, he's going to take it down anyway. But I'm, I actually like he didn't show also, which is great. Yeah. I want to congratulate Surf and Illini over at 2 plus 2 for uh, his second place finish last night yeah. in a local tournament, a local online tournament, actually. Yeah. Congratulations. Uh, we do appreciate the support we get from 2 plus 2 and uh, from, the, from our followers, and uh, we like to support them as well. Yeah. Button is in seat wow. 2. That's right. And... Uh, Corporation Mike is in the big blind. Looks like seat number one there are uh, Mo. He's got Ace Jack off suit. Now we're going to see a limp there by Carlos. Carlos looks to like have 9 8 off suit. And Tommy Huffnagel, actually, excuse me, he's in seat one. He's going to raise. And wow, and Amir's going to call him a button with Queen Jack, which is a very easily dominated hand here. Now Carlos has got 9 something off suit here he had limped with. I think 9 8. Maybe it's pocket nines, because he's going to move all in. Well, he's got one nine there. We can't see what the other card is. He doesn't have much money. I mean, usually Carlos has three or $4,000 here. Yeah. Pretty light. Maybe he's just looking to gamble a little bit. Oh, it is pocket nines. 
Well, so hey. He's, he's limped and moved all in here for only two, 270. And Tommy's going to get out of the way. He raised, and a couple people called. You know, and uh, Corporation Mike is on the phone. He's in the hand. He's got to get off the phone there. <laughs> Again, Dave, we are on a five to ten minute delay to protect yes. the integrity of the game, but we don't allow electronic equipment. It's probably just dirty. Yeah. Look at this. How about that? I guess Mike's going to fold because he's walked away from the table. Yeah, clearly. Whatever he's, uh, whatever's on the phone is more important than yeah. his hand. Carlos is going to take it down. Nice, good. So there you go. Limp three raise. Takes it down. Take it down. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. If you have any questions, comments, uh, suggestions, please email us at live at bike.com. Or if you want to follow a live thread, you can go to 2plus2.com, go to forums, go to uh, mid-level and high limit, no limit, hold them, right? And click on a live at the bike thread for November 18th. Man, this year is flying around, huh? Yeah. Again, we do read them. <laughs> Questions, comments, suggestions, positive or negative, Dave. We've got a lot of positive input about the show. Let's get some negative comments going. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and we do apologize for being a couple minutes late tonight, Dave. I posted on the forum. We turned on the uh, show. The lights kind of went out over the table, so we had to do a quick restart. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're always trying, you know, our technical staff is always trying to, you know, give some more additions for us. And we actually put in a couple of new cameras and a couple of new lights, I believe, and it just kind of overloaded our electrical system. Bring in the, uh, the Diablo. Bring in the Diablo. <laughs> and the flop here is Ace 9 7. Uh, having a couple problems getting our cards up there, but we'll fix that in a second. Now, I see real quick that Corporation Mike has a 7, oh, and sorry. it was checked on the flop. Now, C number 5, Freddy's got a 9. He's going to call. Nine. <coughs> and they check it down, and Freddy's going to take this down with a pair of 9s. I know you have to call anything as well. Really? That's good to know. Good to know. Button has moved to seat four. Small blind is ten dollars. Big blind is twenty. That would be Freddie in seat five and Carlos in seat seven. So big hands here. Corporation Mike's got Ace King. Tommy Hoffnagel has Ace King, and seat eight Max has got Ace Queen. Now it's two seventy. This would be a great time to have pocket nines, huh? That's right. $270 raise on the button by Mike. And the action's to Max, and he's going to call with ace-queen off suit. Now what does Tommy do here? And this raise is, uh, I want to say, two... And Tommy's moving all in. Wow, he's going to move all in here with the ace-king. He's king. moving all in for... And, and, and it looks like a couple of thousand dollars. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I mean, he raised it up to 80. Mike, Corporation Mike made it 280, got a call in between, and now Tommy has moved all in for another $2,000. And Corporation Mike looks to have maybe maybe 1,000 there in front of him? About 1,500 in front of him. And look at this. Max has got ace-queen over there. It's probably a pretty easy lay down for Max. Well, it should be. I mean, he called 280 out of position with ace-queen, and Mike's going to throw away ace-king. Yeah. Well, you know what? It's playing the player. I mean, that's Tommy doing that. Yeah. You know, what do you put Tommy on there? You put him on mo minimum queens, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and as Max can call, the pot is now the pot is now about twenty-seven hundred dollars, two thousand to call, and let's see how much does he have. I don't think he has enough to get away from it. He doesn't. Yeah. He's gonna make the call. And, and Max is in bad shape here. I mean, all, I mean, three of those aces are dead. I mean, the only thing he's, you know, a couple of the kings are dead, so maybe he can spike a queen here. Yeah, he's got basically three outs to win this one, unless he flops some sort of a straight or flush draw. Yeah. Oh, oh wow. look at that! A queen comes off. Queen three, Jack. And he's a great chip. He's a ace of spades. Turns a four, and the river's a six, and he's gonna take it down versus Tommy's ace king. Yeah. Wow. 
Oh, you know, I gotta Ace tell you, smokes. you know, I mean, you can look at this and go, wow, what a terrible call with Ace Queen, but you know what, though? I think Max yeah. only had about 250 left, yeah. 300 left, so he kind of looked at it and said, well, it's 300 to win about 1,000. Yeah. I'm getting three to one. You know, if the guy has jacks or less, I'm in good shape. Right. Odds wise. Yeah. And even if the guy had ace king, he's only about a three to one dog, and he's getting about three to one. So it's not a terrible call if you look at it that way, money wise. Button is in seat five. Carlos, the small blind, ten dollars. Big blind is Max, who just won that big pot there. Yeah. Take down about a thirteen hundred dollar pot. Now, obviously, tonight is the player of the night award, right? We get giving away Paul McCartney tickets. Now, calling with Ace Queen and sucking out right. does not qualify you for player of the day. I think that that might have been a good play, though, on Tommy's part. He's a really tight player. He moved in there with Ace King. I mean, moving in with Ace King, Dave. Like we said, just be, the winner of this contest tonight, he might not win money. He might not lose money. Who knows? Yeah. It's just the, in terms of what was the best play. And please help us out by emailing us at liveatthebike.com with who you think should win the player of the day. Now, we can see Carlos's hand. He's got ace, deuce. He's got ace, deuce. Yep, and it uh, looks like he's going to take it down there. They're actually going to check it down. Oh, they're checking it down. Okay. They're checking it down. And once in a while, Carlos likes to do this. And the river was actually a 10 there, and it gave, I think, a full house there to seat five. <laughs> now, obviously, we don't approve of that. Oh, actually, Carlos. This game is not usually, doesn't usually happen in this game. Well, you want the blind? Button is in seat seven. Over to seat seven. <laughs> and it looks like we're gonna see uh, Tommy Huffnagel there in the big line. The buttons there in seat seven. And we got a raise here by Mike yes, with sir. Queen Nine. Now, it's a short table. I think he's trying to take advantage of being a short game here. Yeah. Now, Dave, we're going to not be able to get the cards up for this hand, so we'll That's okay. walk yeah. you through it. Well, why don't we do it kind of blind here? Okay. Carlos is raised on the button. You know, I'm sorry, Mike is raised. We knew he had queen nine. Yep. Okay. And we got a call here by the button and a call in seat eight. And the flop comes out rags, nine, four, six. So Mike's actually hit top pair here. Yeah, now we know he has top pair. Yeah. We do have no idea what Carlos has or what Max has. Well, there you go. There's Max's hands. We have no idea what Carlos has, but uh, let's just guess. And Mike's going to bet 300 here with the queen nine. The board is nine, six, four. Well, there's Carlos's hand, uh, and he has nine, eight. Okay. So I'm sorry, he has eight, eight. He has pocket eights. Oh, pocket eights, okay. We were going to try to uh, just kind of guess what Carlos has, but that's part of the thing. It's kind of tough to play against Carlos because you right. never know what he might have. And again, the board reads 9-6-4 with a couple of spades. Well, this is one of those hands that's tough to get away from. Like you always say, the pocket eights is a tough hand in this case. Absolutely, just with that one over card. Especially with Mike betting. Board. What could Mike, I mean, Mike could be betting anything here. I have my pack. I have a pack of something here. And I got to tell you, I don't know if I would lay this down against Mike. I know. I mean, a lot of hands Mike could have here. Mike's bet 300. He's made that continuation bet here. I shouldn't have said anything. Now you're going to Hey, Mike was in really bad shape, too. Queen nine against ace queen, and he, he hit his... Let's see, I, boy, I would be really surprised against... Know, against oh, Carlos is going to make the lay down. And that's a great lay down. Makes the lay down. I mean, i got to be honest. I don't know if I would make that lay down. Yeah. I might even raise Mike there. Yeah. Really? You know? You got two eights there? Yeah. That's unbelievable. There is two more cards. You have all the cards against me. Anyone can come. George's Georgiou. And uh, Button's going to move over there to seat Hello. number eight. Hello. And look at that, George Georgian. <laughs> the Greek <laughs> poker god. Moving to seat six. Moving to seat six. Yeah, um, he gave me a hard time all week because I gave him a hard time about sucking out on Mo last week with the seven deuce. <laughs> so uh, he said... 
he, he came up to me and goes, I'm not talking to you all week. That's it. And I go, okay. Well, when he says, I have a tell on Mo, Mo bets it. And, uh, Mo, you know, he says, I got to tell on Mo. Mo bets it when he doesn't have it. And he had aces, and I'm going to call all the way with a pair of sevens. And then, you know, well, he, suck out at the he, end. Well, he did, say, he did say he was going to make a move whether he hit his seven or not. Yeah. Whether he hit his trips or not, he was going to make a move. So, in fairness to George, he was going to do that. But I'm going to say. King 6-3 here on the flop. And uh, Joe, who raised preflop with ace ten, is going to make it a continuation bet, well, takes, and he's going to take it down. Yeah, it takes advantage of position there. Yeah. So, Dave, big weekend of football for you guys coming up. Uh, yeah, the Jets get to go into Denver. Yeah, be a real <laughs> exciting uh, massacre. <laughs> go in there, we get our ass kicked. Be fun. And. Uh, Button's going to move over here to seat one. Yes, Button is going to move over to seat one. Well, the Patriots are playing New Orleans at home. Well, that's a gimme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think uh, USC plays Fresno State. Fresno State's actually ranked 16th in the country. Yeah. But USC is still giving him, like, 23 points. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> now, we got a raise here and a couple of callers. Probably be about a 50 to 25 score. Pocket sevens, ace king suited, and ace jack. Now Carlos brought this one in with ace king suited. Tommy called him with ace jack, and Max is in there with pocket sevens. So it's about a hundred and fifty dollar pot going three ways. And there's the king for Carlos. Yeah, that's a pretty nice flop for Carlos, huh? King six eight, couple spades. He's gonna move all in. He's gonna wow. move the rest of the money all in. Man, no point in slow playing there, huh? Yeah, about <laughs> what? It's about a thousand dollars there, Dave. It looks like. I think those, that's a got some white chips in there. Is, too, is that you? a white chip or those purple chips in this? Yeah, it's about a thousand dollars. Well, okay. five hundred white, five hundred brown there, yeah, yeah. Right. and everyone folds. And he takes it down. So good for Carlos. Like you said earlier in the show, he usually likes to play with a lot of chips, right? It's yeah. Interesting. Uh, well, I actually played with him. I had the uh, pleasure of playing with him a couple of nights ago. Yeah. And uh, such a, I mean, he's a really, really class guy, really nice guy. But obviously, he is action. Yeah. He is a live one. Once again, we are live at the bike, folks. I'm David Tuckman here with Bart Hansen. We're playing No Limit Hold'em. The lines are 10 and 20. And uh, normally our Friday night is bluff night, but tonight it is VIP night. Very important player, and pretty much that's the best player of the night award. Right. And uh, so the best player of the night will go to Paul McCartney tickets. That's right. Um, once again, the best player is not necessarily who wins the most money. i got to tell you a funny story about those Paul McCartney tickets. Too. Okay. Now we get a raise here by, uh, by uh, looks like seat number two there on the button. That's a mirror. He's gonna make it 90. He's got pocket or he's got queen jack off suit. And Tommy limp calls here with pocket fours. Well, mirrors hit top pair. Queen nine six with a couple of hearts. You know what? I like the raise by a mirror. He's using the button. He doesn't have a great hand. Queen jack off suit obviously is not a great hand, but he uses the button and he uses his position. And he takes control of the hand by raising. And now he's going to bet 120, but Tommy looks like he's going to call here, Dave. Wow. He's going to make the call. Really? Interesting. Is he going to make a play, or does he just Fox like that? Fox now uh, 420. Now the turn's at 10. Wow. Well, that only makes Amir's hand even stronger. Yeah. Now he's open-ended. But Pot's about 420 here, and Amir's going to bet again. And Amir's a pretty straightforward now player Tommy's here. I mean, get rid he's of it. not really tricky. Right. Well, you know, you know, going back to that hand with the pocket eights versus... Uh, uh, you know, Mike's queen nine. I got to tell you, I wouldn't have laid that down. I, I said the same thing. Yeah. Good lay down by Carlos. Close up of Tommy Huffnagel there. Yeah. Tommy Huffnagel, he has got some poker stories. I mean, he has played with them all. He's played with Stewie Unger, Puggy Pearson, Doyle Brunson. Played with them all and lived to tell about it. I think they're going to chop this one down there in the blinds. Yeah. Carlos and uh, Max, Max in there. Max in uh, seat number eight. So that's a reduced rake. The rake for this game is three plus one, Dave, I believe. The, uh, the no limit games here at the bike are only $3. Yeah, I mean, it, it's dirt cheap. Yeah. So, I mean, for a game where you might win three or $4,000, the yeah. amount of money that's thrown around this game, to only charge that amount of rake, it, it, it's so cheap, it's ridiculous. 
And again, I mentioned like at one of the other casinos in town, for the 510, 400 max game, 400 max restricted buy-in game, the rake is five plus one. Yeah. Incredible. Now C2 is gonna raise here, Amir, he's got ace-queen suit, he's gonna make it 80 to go. It's one of those things where you play, you play for six hours, you look around and you go, who won? Did anybody right. win here? Right, right. About 60 to 70 percent of the chips have been taken off the table. Yeah, unless new money comes in, it's, it's yeah. all going away. Now well, Max is called here with he's ace in bad three shape. hearts. Flop comes out jack, jack, five. Now I'll tell you that, I know you laugh at this, but there's sometimes I will actually call a small raise if I have a lot of implied odds, if I have a lot of money behind, with a small ace like that, almost hoping the other player has a big ace. Right. Cause, because I really want to get lucky and try to hit two pair or try to hit a wheel or something like that. 140. Or even maybe I get some sort of suited type draw. Well. Um, I just don't, I'm not going to trap myself with hitting an ace though. Max has checked and Amir has bet. And uh, so obviously, like you said, you're not playing that hand to hit an ace. No, definitely but not. But even though you said you'd rather be up against a big ace, I still think you'd probably be rather up against pocket kings. No, I, as I'm saying, I don't want to be up against pocket kings. Well, because you, you, you might... You, because I won't win any money. You're going to win a small pot. Yeah, I'm gonna, right. I, I want to be up against... There have been times where I've seen somebody bump it up, make it a $20 raise or a $30 raise in a 5-5 in a five, five game, and I got $1,200 behind me, right? And he's got a lot of money, too. And I know the kind of player will not get away from a big ace. And I get lucky enough to flop two pair. I'm going to break it. Yeah. I'm going to win all his money, which is why I'm playing the hand. It's, it's almost the, the equivalent of why you'd play a set, you know, a small pair. Yep. You're playing it because you hope the guy has aces and you want to hit your set. Now it's interesting. C W Siggy on two plus two says here, in terms of points for the you know who we're going to decide is the very best play, very best player. How about points for avoiding trap hands pre flop? Without a doubt. Without a doubt. And we'll try to mention that as if we see them people folding you know, king queen. Oh, good lay downs and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. Now the pot was limped around here, and C two is going to bet here a mirror. He's got queen eight. And Max here is going to call. A, does he have any type of draw in there, Dave? Queen Jack, interesting. Well, well, now he's got a straight draw. <laughs> right. Yes, okay. Turn is an ace. And he's got a jack draw. That's his or George? He might be making a play at two. Well, no, maybe not. No, because he took the card. He got checked to him and he, and he took the card. And the rivers is seven. Well, let's seven. see if, he goes, if it goes check by Amir and then Max bets it. Nope, check, check. Don't really know what the point of uh, calling there with Queen Jack. Yeah, once in a while you can make that play if you think the other guy's on spades and then you're going to take it away from him. Right. <laughs> and we have a post here, and I, I'm. Uh, we have a post here by a young one. He looks like he hasn't uh, posted on the thread before. He said, Bart and Dave, how about inviting. Uh, I forget the guy's name and his first name. Is it Prelod? Prelod Friedman to the game. He's a huge right. internet online player to the uh, Yosha's uh, Whale Night on Wednesday nights. Well, if we could get him in the game, he's openly invited. Yeah, I, mean, I will tell Yosh. I mean, believe me, we'll get a seat for him. I mean, to be well, it's not a matter of that. To be honest with you, the game is rarely full, isn't it? Right, right. It's I mean, not every time I look over, it's six or seven people in the game. Right, right. So, come on down. Sign up and play. I'd love anybody in the game. Yeah. Especially if he has the advantage of, you know, going back and watching the archives and seeing how all these guys hey, play. And no I one knows it. how he plays. And look at this. Tommy Huffnagel is going to move all in after a straddle and a, it got called in a few spots. He's going to move all in for 700 with pocket sevens here, Dave. Now, this well, is a little bit different here. It's a small raise, and he's trying to pick it up, and he only has 700. Yeah. Well, Mo had called, or Mo was posted in between, and... Uh, I don't think Carlos is going to get involved here. I knew you were calling, so you wanted me to raise. I knew you had a hand. And... Yeah, Tommy takes it down, I think. Yeah, Tommy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mo's in, but not really. Yeah, he's got 10-3 off suit. <laughs> Mo just wants some camera time. Yeah, he's I think his it. wife is watching. <laughs> Tommy takes it down. Well, usually, Dave, the game, this game has a lot of chips on it, but some of the players are playing kind of short tonight, right? Yeah, it, it, it's surprising how uh, yeah. how short the game is. I mean, usually we have an excess, I, I would say, we usually have somewhere in the neighborhood of fifty to $75,000 on the table. Tonight we have more like, say, 30000 25000 on the table. I know you're going to wait for it. I know you want to be raised, I think you're going to re-raise. I can call you a raise. It's been a couple of days before Mike has uh, shaved his head there. Yeah. Got some stubble going on. Yeah, he's got to get the uh, the head shaver. 
Can I get one of those too? No, I already have it. Thank Corporation you. Mike is in the big blind here in seat four. Can I have it? That was the last one. Yeah, Carlos is always fun to We get a couple players that are fun to watch here on the table. Looks like he's going to come in here with Jack four suited, Dave. He's going to make the limp. Seat eight's going to limp in here with seven nine. Seat eight's a pretty loose player as well. Mo's out of there. Max, yeah, it seems like yeah. it. Seems a little loose past it for my first uh, first impressions. We've got five way action here, a hundred dollar pot. Ten seven three. Now, now two players have spades. Yep, yeah, Mike and Carlos both have spade draws. And I don't think anybody has a ten. Max is the best hand with nine seven. Now Mike's gonna bet here, he's gonna bet forty dollars into his flush draw. And let's see how Carlos plays the Jack Four. Now this might be a time where you raise it, because if you hit your jack, or if you think, if you, or if you think if Mike is full of crap, you can not possibly get rid of the seven. Well, well he's going to raise. He's going to make it a hundred to go. And I don't mind this play at all. He's going to make it a hundred to go. If you can get rid of a weak ten or a weak seven, you know suddenly your hand might be good against, especially in this case where Mike, he's got him dominated. Right. I mean Mike needs a nine or a deuce, and we see a nine and deuce out already. <laughs> Amir folds. Max folds. Action Joe wins going to fold, and Mike's going to call. Oh, and, and Carlos has got him almost killed. I mean, yeah, I mean, what, the, I mean, Mike would have to, you know, you know spike a deuce outs. or a nine here. Yeah, I mean, because it's only two, two, two deuces. Now two turns the left. queen, and remember, Carlos drove somebody out with the queen, but it goes check, check, and the river's a jack, and Carlos makes a pair of jacks. But Mike, he is not going to put in that uh, in the bluff here after uh, Carlos checked him behind. And uh, Mike just gave up there with the deuce nine. Carlos is going to take it down with a pair of well, jacks. Well, Mike's not, Mike's not stupid. It's tough to bluff Carlos out. If Carlos has any yeah, type of hand, it's really tough to bluff him out. Did. Well, there's no way that Carlos is probably going to leave there with right. a jack. Because how do you put Mike on a hand that's better than jack? You know, unless he got lucky with two pairs or something on the turn. Right. Wait now. <laughs> and again, Barry Woods, you know, live at the Mike uh, mascot, yeah. if you'd call him. He's uh, in Vegas still. Is he? Yeah. Okay. Don't tell any, anybody, you know, don't tell, don't tell him myself. Don't tell him what, that live he's in the Vegas? Mascot. Oh, that, that, okay. <laughs> I didn't mean any negative connotations of that. He's, very, he's a lovable mascot. guy. Oh, I'm putting more? Yeah. But we used to kick the orange man around at school, Dave. Like, we used to roll actually, him over. <laughs> actually, Syracuse is playing a big game tonight. Syracuse plays Florida tonight yeah, for the, yeah. uh, the Coaches for Cancer Classic the finals tonight. Yeah. Now, we got a raise here by seat 7 to 50. And uh, Mike's going to call, and Mike is dominated here. Carlos has the betting lead, and he has position. He's picked up top here. Now, oftentimes you'll see just Mike just put... Put a move on Mike. I mean, uh, on Carlos. Look at Carlos. There. Carlos has said, look, I have something here. Whatever you want to do. Check, check here. Check all the way or just check one time? All right. Check all the way? You have kill is good. Eight jacks. And, uh... I thought it was already like... I thought it was already like... And we are going to, uh... so close. I would have given you the five. Dave, Dave, again, we had a problem with people. Uh, it's not going to be here tonight. He's in New York. Button is now in seat four. Button now is in seat four. Small blind is uh, Freddy. Mm -hmm. Seat six, George Georgie, and the Greek poker god is yep. the big blind. He's finally going to play it. Took him long oh, enough. Yeah, we got a couple of limpers in the game. And uh, looks like it got folded around there. Well, excuse me, Mike yeah, Mike raised actually, yeah, he with raised Jack five of diamonds. It's not a little bit of a steal here. Yeah. Um, but Max is going to give him a little bit of action with H3. $60 yeah. And the problem with calling Mike's raise with H3 is you can't really put him on anything. 
Right. Especially when he's raising on the button. Well, he's flopped in the ace, but look at this. Mike's got a flush draw. Yeah, this could be interesting. Yeah. So this is one of those hands of ace three where you can really get yourself in trouble. How do you know where you're at? But it goes check, check. Mike takes the card. The turn's a deuce. Let's see if Max is going to fire here. No. He's still checked with ace three, and the river's a four. And now Mike on a busted draw is going to bet. Mike checked the weak ace all the way, and Mike is going to bet, and I guess Max is like, well, I'm going to check to induce a bluff, I'm going to check to induce a bluff, I'm going to check to induce a bluff, yeah. and then finally Mike bet at now, the, the end. The weird thing is, I'm surprised Mike didn't bet, the, I mean, obviously he didn't bet the flop because he had a draw. Right, right. But to me, sometimes you want to bet that flop anyway. With an ace high out there, of course. I mean, why not represent? You're the one, you're the raiser. Right. And if you get called, yeah. well, okay, you still get outs. Absolutely. Thank you very much, sir. That's the problem with ace three, though. All, all it really is is a, cat, it's a bluff catcher. Yep. You know, it's nothing more than that. You can't really take any heat with it. Right. Button's going to move over there to seat five. All right, Suited ace, ace seven of spades for Amir in seat two. Now Mo's going to come in and he's going to raise there. In an early position, he's got nine, ten of clubs, a little bit of a pot filler. He makes it one ten to go. Well, that's about five and a half times the size of the blind. Well, he buys himself the button. He gets everybody to fold behind him. Wow, he might get everybody to fold this. Yep. And he is. Picks wow. up a limper and a blind. We raised it up to 110. I tell you, it's funny. We do bluff night. Everybody bluffs, right? Right, right. We do best player award, and everybody's trying to play good. Right. Paul McCartney tickets. Oh, the funny story I wanted to tell you about that was uh, sometimes the way that we get the tickets uh, for, for these types of events is our own Denny Williams buys these tickets in bulk so that he'll have extras. They'd be like, well, you guys want, you know, these tickets to give out here to these guys at the table. Does he really? really? Uh, yeah. Why does he buy them in bulk? I, just know, to give them away? To, yeah, just to give them away or maybe, you know. To, what a nice guy. Yeah, he's crazy. <laughs> Jeez, I should ask him. I, I, I can do some tickets for something. We get a raise here by seat two with the ace jack of clubs. And George Georgian is going to call a pocket seven. So. Well, he's got the button. I don't mind. I like that call, actually, on the button. And once again, Max is going to call with the weak ace. I mean, it is ace eight suited. And Mike's in there with the gap suited connector, so we've got a $320 pot going in the flop. Ace 10 king, and Amir has the best hand. This is interesting. Is Max going to get himself in trouble here with a weak ace? Boy, not really a great flop for Ace 8, Dave. They're Ace 10 king. No. Spades. Amir bets. 230. Bets it's not a bad flop at all for Ace Jack. It clubs there. He's got top pair with a gut shot straight draw. Mike folds. George folds. And it's an easy fold for sevens, huh? And this is where Max can get himself in trouble. What does Max do? Well, the pot now is about six hundred and fifty dollars, two thirty to call, and he makes the call. He makes the call, so now the pot's almost nine hundred dollars, and we're gonna go to the turn. Turns an eight, Dave. Unbelievable. The problem with that, with, the, with a flop like that, though, even now you turn two pair, yeah. you can't really be that aggressive with it because this guy could have ace king already. And Amir bets three hundred here. Well, I gotta tell you, I like the bet by Amir. I mean, he doesn't know this eight eight helped him. This guy could have something like king jack, king queen. No, no. The way he's playing it, it almost seems like he does. Three hundred dollar bet here. Yeah, but, I mean, how aggressive yeah, can you get with two pair here when it's the top and bottom? And he's going to raise. Yeah, he's going to make a mini raise. He's going to make it 600 total. And Amir, he's going to quickly call. Wow. And we've got about a $2,000 pot brew in here going to the river. I'm surprised he's so quick. He quickly calls. $2,000 going to the river. The river's a four. Not much ace jack and beat there, is it? And he bets 200 into a $2,000 pot. And Amir calls. Well, I mean, hey. One tenth the size of the pot bet there at the end. Certainly priced them out. Priced them in there. Yeah. Wow. And Max's hand is good. I mean, that $200 bet on the river was almost like a little blocker bet. Right. You know, it's kind of weird. Big pot for Max there. Nothing like getting lucky, hitting a few pair on the turn. Absolutely. Thank you, gentlemen. Good luck to all of you. Now, Amir called a $300 raise on the turn. Now, obviously, he did have outs, obviously. If a queen had hit or a jack had hit, he would have beaten him. Or a king, actually. Or a 10. 
had a lot of outs. Yep. Um, but he certainly called very quickly. He did indeed. Now, Dave, I have a question here on uh, the thread. Again, if you want to follow a live thread, go to 2plus2.com, spelled out, click on forums. Texas Hold'em, uh, pot limit and no limit section, the mid and high level section. Uh, the official live the bike thread for 1118. Uh, what does $3, three plus one rake mean? Is that a one dollar? Well, what basically what it means is it it's a three dollar drop plus one dollars for the jackpot. Right. And it's a flat rake. It's not a percentage. Yeah. In in California, it's actually illegal to to base the rake based on the percentage of the pot, unlike Vegas. Right. So three only three dollars a hand goes to the casino, and if there's no flop, only one dollar goes to the casino. Now the pot was limped around, and Amir bet out of the blind to forty with King Eight. And Carlos is going to, you know, he's going to play it straight forward. He's going to race with Queen Jack. He's got top pair. 200 straight is the best. He's going to make it 200. Yeah, pretty straightforward play. I like the play, though, by Carlos. Show us a bluff, Carlos. And Carlos shows the uh, queen. So he shows the good hand. That's not a bluff. I said, show us a bluff, and you show me a good hand. And uh, it's funny, like, again, Action Joe, and we haven't seen him play much over there in C3, Dave. Boy, he is just down tens of thousands of dollars from being on the show. Yeah, he, he's, had, he's had some tough luck here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's funny. I was playing 30-60 limit with him last night. Um, right after you left, actually, we were playing. And I know he was in the game a little with you also. And it's funny because you're playing 30-60 limit. That's a pretty big game, obviously. But, you know, you win a rack, you win two racks. <laughs> And, and it, he can't even make a slight dent into what he's lost in No Limit Hold'em on Live Tonight. Nice. We got a raise here by George George, and he's going to make it 70 to go. He's got Ace Queen. Carlos is going to call in between with pocket eights. And what, and what does Max do here with Ace King? Well, let's see what he does. He's got Ace King yeah. offsuit. Looks like he's just going to call. Just calls. Now, the, you know, Max playing this hand kind of passively, if it misses everybody but it's got high cards there, he, you know, George could make a bet and drive everybody out. Amir's in there with 5-8. The pot comes 9-4-3. Now, remember, Carlos had this identical situation and laid a, this hand down to a bet by Corporation Mike earlier. Let's see what he does against George here. And this time he's going to race George. Wow. He's a tighter player than Mike. i got to tell you, this is a great play. Yeah. I mean, it's like he almost played the pocket eights perfectly, and pocket eights are a difficult hand to play. Right. He's going to make it. And it really is a good raise here because you don't want to. Obviously, pocket eights are vulnerable to a lot of overcards. Now, George bet 220 Dave, into about a $280 pot. And Carlos is going to make a minimum raise. He's going to make it 440 to go. I like the raise. I'm a big fan of minimum raises when the raise is already $200. And he takes it down. Yep. You know, if the raise is, if the bet is 30, I don't want a minimum raise to 60. But if the raise is 200, why not? And he showed it. I laid down once with Mike. I couldn't do it this time. Got an email here from Dan P. He said, what limits does uh, Tommy Huffnagel usually play? And uh, I think uh, uh, Tommy is not. Oh, he, he is back at the table. No, no, he's not wearing his World Series of Poker bracelets tonight. He actually is a World Series of Poker uh, champion, David. Yeah. I believe it was stud high. I forget the year, but we've, we've said it on the show before. And what limits did he play? That was a question, huh? Yeah, and I've seen him play, you know, the yeah, mid to high level mix yeah. games, 8160 mix. He actually, he subscribes, I was talking to him, and he subscribes to Barry Greenstein's theory of he doesn't really necessarily need to play the highest limits, he plays the game. Right. If the best game is the $1,000 game, he plays that game. If the best game is the 8160 limit mix game, he'll play that game. And if the best game is a 300 600 mix game, he'll play that. Um, we have a raise here by Corporation Mike with Queen 5 offsuit. That's the Mike we know of. He made it 70. George is going to call here. Now, is Joe going to re-raise here? No, Joe, Joe just calls. George is, you know, so George's in there with the suited ace. Now, is he going to get in trouble if an ace flops because Joe has him out kicked? No, I doubt it. George is pretty cagey. I don't think he's going to. Well, he doesn't have to worry about it. He hit a nine. $350 pot here, 10, 8, 9. And it looks like Max there with Jack-10 and C-8. Great flop for him. Yeah, now, Joe's also got the same open-ended straight trouble. He does not have a pair. Now, George is going to bet here with the ace nine. He's going to bet 220 again into about a $350 pot. So the pot's about 570, 220 to call. Let's see what now, Max do does. Do you raise this with Jack 10, or do you want to keep people in? Because it's interesting. If you put, if you put, uh, if you put George on an over pair, okay, or if you put him on ace 10 or king 10, well then you're behind. You're drawing. 
Well, he just calls. And you I, want to keep people in because you got a draw? Because it is a rainbow board. Yeah. I mean, do, I mean, do you want to keep somebody in with the same draw that you have, though, too, whereas a raise might knock them out? I mean, not only will a raise with the best pair, you might have the best hand, but also might knock a jack out. Now Joe might come in here. Right. No, definitely. I mean, there's obviously this. Yeah. You can argue this one for sure. Raise. But Joe's going to check raise. He's going to semi-bluff. Check raise semi-bluff from up front. $220 bet there by George. A call by Max. Max's hand's really good. You know, with this flop, Dave, he can stand a big raise here, can he, with Jack-10? Well, I, I mean, you got to think about it. He's got top pair with uh, with an open and a straight draw. And the Joe's going to make it 1,200 more. 1,200 more. See, the more. only thing to me is, okay, now you got to start thinking. He's made it $1,200 more. What is he protecting? Is he protecting a set? Is he protecting two pair? I mean, you don't put him on Jack-Queen, right? Why would he want to? Would he really play it that scared if he had Jack-Queen? He obviously wants the hand to be over now, right? So you start putting him on a range of hands. What might he have? It almost smells like something like bottom two pair or something, right? Exactly. Top two, Even you know. top two. Yeah, with this type of board, two pair is, is really something that you'd want to drive everyone out of. Uh, and I, I don't think George can call, especially with Max behind him. It, is it 1,200 more? Yeah, it's 1,200 more. Yeah, I mean, George, this would in essence almost put him ball in and George says I think you're way behind and he's right about Joe but Max has the best hand now but if George calls then that's a great read by George but George is probably if George calls can Max call right again you know George you know he plays kind of loose uh, in the smaller games but does he you know is he does he want to trust his reads well enough to put this type of money in sometimes he plays this game a little yeah. passive because you know a little bit scared sometimes well, I mean, it's an interesting spot where he, he's made a great read on Joe, but he's not stupid. He knows that Max is behind him, and Max called. Yeah. I mean, George, remember, George only has second pair. This is a tough one for George. I mean, to me, I mean, I think it's a really tough call when you've got Max behind you. Behind you. Yeah. And he keeps pointing to Max because he knows, ah, that's the guy. If it wasn't for Max, I think he'd definitely move all in. And he's got just about, he's, he, I think he's just got about, about 1,200 here. And he's going to let it go. And yeah, I think, he's going to fold. And I think the only reason he's folding is because Max behind him. And I like the lay down. You know? well, now what does Max do? He's got 1,200 to go. And Max is quickly going to fold there with Jack-10. Well, quickly. I, well, a nice bluff, nice semi-bluff by Joe. But the thing is, though, if you're privy, and again, I don't necessarily know if Max knows. And is, does Joe know that tonight isn't bluff night? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good play, though. It's a, you know, it's a check raise. He got everybody off. The, he got the guy off the best hand. we got to put that one down. It's a bluff. but No, no, and obviously it worked. I mean, if the player start, I think if Max started replaying it, though, and started thinking about it, and he goes, well, wait a second. Why did he, why is he pushing so much money in well, if you put them on bottom two pair, do you have the odds to go for it? Because then you've got, okay, I've got three jacks that'll give me the win. I've got two queen, two, two tens that'll give me the win, right? Plus any queens or any sevens for the straight. You've got to start thinking, do about, I have the odds to go for it? Pot was about 2,000, 1,200 to call. And in essence, if Max had wanted to call, I think he pretty much would have pushed all in. I mean, we'll get a chip count here soon enough, but I don't, I mean, I, I think basically he would have been. You know, I mean, and that's the question. I mean, you got to look at it and go, if, if Joe had two small pair, if he had eight, nine, do you have the odds to call that? Well, he was getting a little under two to one with two cards to come. And, and uh, interesting there. Now, Freddie has a uh, top, flop, top pair. We haven't heard from him at all tonight. Yeah. George actually goes, he goes, I had the best hand, definitely had the best hand. And he goes, obviously, he's not right. Um, but he did have the right lead on Joe. <laughs> And look at this. Mike thinks he had bottom two. Now, Freddie's got bets here 190 with King Jack. He had limped in. Yeah, Mike puts him on bottom two, and he played it like he had bottom two. Call 190. Now, Max is going to call. He's got an open and a straight draw there. Queen or seven would complete his hand. Right, yeah. Except the old double gutter, huh? And George is saying it. He keeps saying that's a That was a drawing rage. Raise. That's an open ended. Yeah, the turn is a jack. And now, Freddie's hit two pair. To make it look like a movie. And he looks like he's going to bet the rest yeah. of his money. I think it's 40 here. So now, you know, I mean, it's almost like a limit game. You can call here, Dave, for $40. $40? Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
He also has a pair. I don't know exactly how big the pot is. But. He said, he said Jack and the river's an ace. No good. And that's no good. King Jack is going to be good. No. If you look at it, it kind of looks like I should have a straight there. A lot of cards out there. Now, what I wanted to get back to the fact that maybe Max, I mean, Max quit folded quickly with the Jack 10. Maybe Max doesn't know Joe as well as George does, because George is a guy that, you know, always fancies to tell us that he studies the archives. Right. Really. So he's seen Joe put all kinds of moves on everybody. And uh, that's what, you know, Joe did. He's extremely aggressive sometimes with those draws. And Joe might have Joe might have thought of the same thing, too. Joe might have made that move knowing George couldn't call with Max behind him. Interesting email here from Abraham Farhamand talking about playing tight. He wants to know if he can be a successful poker player and play so tight like Tommy on seat one. Well, Tommy Huffnagel on seat one has won a World Series of Poker Bridge, and he's been a professional poker player for about 30 years. So I would have to say uh, I don't think you can be weak tight or right. passive tight, but if you're an aggressive tight player, well then yes. Now here we go. Look at this. Amir is raised with pocket jacks from the button to 120, and I knew it. Joe's going to make the re-raise. You don't really blame him. He's he's got pocket tens in the small blind. Well, I mean, Amir could make him this button raise, couldn't he? Yeah. Now Mike's got ace queen. We saw him throw away ace king earlier, so. Yeah, but he didn't pre-flop though. And that was to Tommy's all in. Yeah, but now this is another 600 dollar yeah. raise, I think. 620 total. So yeah, 600 more, or excuse me, 520. More. And once again, let's give Mike credit. I mean, he threw away ace queen without thinking about it. To go. Well, Carlos has got ace nine. I'm sure he's going to get out. And when it comes back to Amir, is this playing the player? Would Joe come over the top of me with a hand that I can beat because Joe just figured I was making a button raise? Tough spot for Jax here. You are in position. And we actually had that discussion about ace queen suited versus Jax. Uh, you know, over the last few nights, which hand would you rather have? We always said it was positional dependent. Right. Well, here you've got Jax. You're on the button, and he's going to make the call. So this is going to be yeah. interesting. I don't think he has enough to just make the Well, he does have 1,200. Well, now what happens? King, seven, queen, a horrible flop for both players. And this is where position can really. And, and Joe's going to check. And Amir is not going to check behind him. No, I think he's going to move all in. He yeah, is. Yeah. And, and, and Joe shows the pocket tens. Oh my God. Now the funny thing about that is, I mean, Amir had position, but if, if Joe continued to, uh, you know, with the betting lead, I think he would have taken that pot down, right? It's the problem is though, it's really tough to because you think about it. He raised at six hundred, which means it's like a, what about a thirteen or fourteen hundred dollar bet pot, yeah. right? Joe's pretty much got to move all in. You know, what is he going to do? Throw a little $300 bet in there? Yeah. It looks like kind of like a pine bluff bet, you know? Yeah. So you got to bet big. Now, this guy just called my $600 raise. I mean, that's the power position. I mean, if you raise $600, Bart, and the guy calls your $600 raise, and you got pocket tens, the flop comes out king queen. How confident are you betting? You know, right, right. That's tough. Right. I was saying the only thing that you can hope is that he has pocket jacks and he might be able to bet him off the hand, right? Exactly. That's just the only thing you can Actually, hope. Actually, jacks are the only hand he could have there, right? Right. That you could beat, that you could get him to, that you know, get him to lay down. Lay right. down right. <laughs> Three way action. You know he didn't call you, you know, you know he didn't call with ace ten. Well, Carlos is in one of those rare situations where pocket sixes is an overpair to the board, and he's going to bet. Three, and he's in good shape, and Freddie's got top pair. He bets 100. Freddie checked it from up front. Pot was limped around. Carlos has bet 100. And Carlos really hasn't been on a line at all tonight, Dave. I mean, uh, you know, it's funny. When he first came on the show, we said he was playing it pretty solid. Then towards the end of that show, I think it was a $500 game, he just kind of... Look at this. Max makes a call with a seven. And the turn's an ace. Oh, man. Wow. And Carlos is going to check. And Max checks right behind him. And the river's a five, and now everyone's scared. And I think that this one might just get... You no, know, Max put a little $100 bet in there. Oh, I like the bet. I mean, I like the value bet at that point. Well. Even if Carlos has 5-4, it obviously is no good. Um, and I think if Carlos had a three, you would have heard from him at this point. And he makes the call, though, Dave. Ace is good. And everyone's going to see the fact that he called the flop with the ace seven there. Yeah, you kind of wonder, what, what were you in yeah. there with? Right. I mean, he didn't have the ace of hearts. He had the ace of clubs. Right. Um, 
Interesting thing now, now no limit hold'em. It's very much of a game where you know one hand can really either make your knight or kill your knight. Yeah. And that's kind of Carlos's biggest problem was he'll play pretty solid for two hours and he'll make one or two mistakes and lose it all. Now the button's moved over here to seat four. Chop chop. Chop chop. Chop chop. Got an $80 raise here on the button. Pocket sixes for Corporation Mike. Boy, that's like one of the first hands we've seen him play tonight. $30. And, he's, and the funny thing is, he hasn't played many hands and he's down about $1,000 already. You know, Dave, if you're thinking about a, a nice stocking stuffer for a loved one. You know, I was thinking of that. Really? Yeah. Um, hey, Where why could don't I get you give one? them a subscription to the archives? That's a great idea. You can actually email us at Live the Bike, and we will set a subscription up for you if you want to do that type of Christmas deal. Or you can click on the archive banner on the upper left-hand corner of your screen if you're at liveatthebike.com. Wow. And the archives get you access to every single show that we've ever done. How much is it? Fourteen ninety five a month. I mean, you Still? get commentary from Barry Amazing. Greenstein, Doyle Brunson, a lot of the greats, plus an instructional DVD from Howard Lederer. Pretty impressive. I'm leaving. Limped around here. 963 with a couple of diamonds. I believe seat one... Has pocket eights? Yep. Okay. So I think he has gonna, the best hand. He's going to bet 120. And everyone limped in, and now he's going to bet here. Just one over card to the board. Doesn't look like anyone has a nine here. No, Amir's got a pair of sixes. Yeah, he's six, out seven. of it. And it looks like everyone's probably going to fold here. Yeah. Pretty straightforward, and Tommy takes it down. And that's the kind of play where Tommy, now, if you were a tight, weak player, you wouldn't bet that eight unless you had a set, maybe. Right. But Tommy's obviously not that. He's aggressive. Okay, I'm going to take this pot down. Button's going to move over there to George Georgie. And again, he had a good read on Joe. But sometimes... And I think I hear Diablo in the background, Dave. I think Diablo's going to take most seat and seat nine out his blind. Wow. Actually, he's going to take seat five seat. Freddy's Freddy. actually going to be getting up in the yeah. middle. Okay. And again, Diablo is not the old Diablo of, you know, loose kind of reckless player. He's become quite the player now. Diablo? Yeah. Yeah, well, he's, he's got that aggressive style that really bodes well for tournaments. He's been running real good in tournaments. Um, I think he has, you know, four or five final tables over the last six months. Now, Mike raised it up here with queen seven offsuit. Jakes it down. You know, you would think that Mike's style would be really aggressive, too, in tournaments, but I think that he works so much. Does he ever get a chance to play no limit hold'em tournaments? Yeah, he's played a couple of tournaments, and he's yeah. done pretty well. And I believe Allen is in the house as well. Mo there he is, Action Allen. He's always dressed nicely, Dave. Yeah, he's a sharp-looking guy. Yeah, you know, I, I, what I would give for that wardrobe... Again, he's straight out of the Beastie Boys Sabotage music video. Yeah, time, 70s, 70s uh, you know, police dramas. Yeah, and he looks good in the, I, mean, yeah. I don't think you could pull it off, Bart. <laughs> <laughs> we had a raise here by uh, Corporation Mike. Four players. We got one Four way action. Yeah. So Jack, 6-6 six, six there. Look at Freddy. Wow. Flops full house. Last hand, I think, or one of his last hands. And Mike's going to make continue with the betting lead. He bets 150, and let's see what Freddie does. Well, a lot of people wouldn't raise there, Dave, with the made full house, but he does. He's going to raise it to 400. Now, he, now in this case, I like the play. I mean, I, 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 I like playing it fast because nobody puts you on a big hand. Right. But in this case, nobody has a jack, nobody has a right. six, so you right. can't get paid. And he didn't show it, but I think he just told George. And George rebought there for more money. Yeah, we got a little more money on the table already there. Yeah, George has already got George has got close to three thousand dollars. 
Another kind of cool thing is we have our Ho Ho Hold'em tournament coming up pretty soon in the Bicycle Casino. Yeah. Uh, Monday through Friday tournaments are at 7.15 p.m. Saturday and Sunday tournaments start at 4.15. And the first one is next Thursday, November 24th. That's Thanksgiving, and I'll yeah. tell you a little bit about this after this hand because we've got pocket queens there for uh, seat number seven, Carlos, and he's going to make it 200 to go. That's it? Yeah, we've got a lot of you know little hands in here that might stand that type of race. We've got 910 suited over there for Mo. But again, I don't know if Mo has enough money or Carlos has enough money. He's not going to go 200 with 910. No. Whoa, what the hell is going on? I don't and think, I don't, I don't think, think George is going to call you. I mean, you're talking $200 raise. The blind's only yeah. 1020. I don't even know that. It's kind of like a Tony S raise. Right. Yeah, and he's going to take it down. He's probably going to show it. And I'm referring, things. when I talk about Tony, I'm talking about one of our tightest prop players here. Right. Who literally, he won't play a hand, won't play a hand, won't play a hand, and then kings, the blinds are like 5-5, five, five, and he makes it 300 to go. Well, the funny thing is, is, though, the shows that we've seen him on, he'll get a couple callers, yeah, though, too. Yeah, it's amazing. Under the gun, race, 200. Right. Yeah. The blinds are 5-5. Five, five. Right, right. <laughs> okay, so... Dave, if you come down here on Thanksgiving yeah, what? and you play and you are a seated player here in a cash game, I think of at any level, but I'm not sure about that, you will get a turkey dinner at the table. And I will be here because uh, I'm going home for Christmas in Boston, but I'll be here at my home, the Bicycle Casino, for Thanksgiving. So will I. Check it out. You will, too? I'll be here, too. Really? I will be here. <laughs> I will be here. You're married, I be, though. I will be chopping down on some turkey. Yes. No, one hundred. I might even wear my turkey suit. But, of course, we are actually not doing the show on Thursday and Friday night next week. Again, a reminder, we are dark. <laughs> Maybe we'll just play a heads-up tournament, me and you. We'll do a little freeze-out. Now, we have a raise here. By I think it was by Carl. Again, he made it 200 again. Well, and this now, time this he time, he's going to get called in three spots, but he's got ace-king. Wow. Mike called with king-10. Wow. Nice flop from Max there. He's got... Over cards with the nut flush card. Yeah, but look at this. Freddy's got an over pair, and he's going to bet 200 here. And all this money could go in right now. Well, the pot is $800, and Freddy has bet only 200, Dave. A quarter size of the pot. Now, if Carlos you're Max, calls. if you're Max, do you move over the top? No, no? it's just going to call. Wow. See, I, I would have liked to raise there, especially with Carlos in the middle. So this is the time where you definitely want to get rid of that other ace. Yep. Here we go to the turn. The turn's a club, and Max has a made hand. He's got the nut flush. Well, the problem is now he's not going to get any action, I imagine. And let's see how much Max is going to bet here. He's going to bet 200. That, well, what do I know? Maybe he's going to get action. Well, Freddie doesn't have the ten of clubs in his hand. Pot is $1,400, and he's going to bet 200 here. The problem with Freddie's hand is you got to look at this and, and Freddie makes the call. I mean, you got to start rethinking his hand. Carlos raised 200, and all these guys called. Yeah. I can't be pocket nines. I can't be pocket eights. Okay? I can't be clubs. I can't be any overpair. What can I be? Sevens? And Freddie's trying to convince him. He's like, I want to check. You want to check it down? I want to check. And Card Bags is like, no. No, I'm not checking it down. Right. And now he's going to bet 500 and Freddie folds. He actually gets away from the overpair. I mean, sometimes it's funny because we kind of had a little bit of this happen last night. Sometimes it's contagious. People will be like, oh, everyone's checking it down. Everyone's checking it down. I'm not here to check it down. I just not made the nut flush. You right. kidding me? Uh, well, I mean, hey, if I had pocket tens there, I'd want the guy to check too. Right, right, right. But, I mean, let's be honest. You've got to start replaying a hand in your head and go, wait a second. I bet 200 and the guy overcalled after Carlos called, right? Right. Now a club hits. What the heck can I beat? So it's Friday night, which means what? It's uh, double fist night tonight? Actually, I think I'm going to be taking the night off there from uh, double fist I'm night. I'm very disappointed. Why? Uh, really? Gonna... Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Well, no, no, nothing. Actually, I'm going to be honest with you. My, I'm not really feeling that well right now. Oh, okay. I'm actually counting the moments down when I can get home. <laughs> well, this could be an exciting night on Live at the Bike. We could watch. Watch Bart Barth <laughs> on Live at the Bike. Keep benching it. You know, walk me through it, please. Once in a while, man. I don't think uh, my stomach can really hold, you know, a couple shots of Patron and, you know, 15 Miller Lights. 15? <laughs> Man. <laughs> I, I know you can down it, too. 15, jeez.
Yeah, you know, in our technical director, Isaac, you know, I'll go into the bar yeah. after the show, and I'll get him a beer, and I'll be, you know, I'll have four beers in the time that it takes him to finish one. You, you're like a fish, though. I mean, I, I don't know anybody that drinks as fast as you. It's a, I mean, it's actually quite impressive. <laughs> quite impressive. Oh, yeah. Some people would say. <laughs> Well, I'll have to have your uh, your share then after the show. <laughs> we got a, a raise here by Corporation Mike on the button. He's got Queen 10 off, so he made it 60 to go. And uh, we've got a $240 pot. Oh, 10 7 4. He's got top pair. And Carlos is open ended here. Yep. And Carlos is going to bet right into it. 80. He bets 80. Now, it's small. It's about what? About a $300 pot, right? Wow. Two, yeah, about a $250 pot. And uh, Mike calls. Look at that. Carlos named his price. And the turn is a king. Does Carlos put another, like, let's see if Carlos bets another 100 here. Yeah. See if he wants to kind of, like, name his price. And then he bets 100. Yes, sir. He raised. And uh, Mike is now going to raise. Yeah, Mike's not going to put up with that. I got you on jack 10. Right? But Carlos calls. Mike raised it up a couple hundred, and Carlos called. And the river's a four, and Carlos does not get there. And the pot is over $1,000, and Mike's just going to check it down here. Yep, 8-9 didn't get there. Didn't get that's funny. Mike said he put him on Jack Ten. If you put the guy in Jack Ten, would you bet again? No. You have That's to. Good point. Well, you have to. Otherwise, it's a chop pot. Uh, that is a good point. Very astute of you. Feel free to email us at liveatthebike.com with any of your questions, concerns, suggestions, and your votes for the best player of the night. Yeah. Haven't seen any really great, great calls or great, great bluffs. Yeah. Joe Wynn actually made a nice bluff. Um, well, I don't think George would have fallen for it. Thank you, sir. Well, I think that, again, George was, uh, he was, uh, you know, troubled by the fact that there was someone behind him. Right, exactly. Yeah. We got a raise here to $60 by seat number four. Corporation Mike, he's got 10-9 off suit and three callers. Clock comes out rag six five four with a couple of hearts. Mike is going to lead again here. He's going to bet a hundred, and he should take it down here. Although the 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 bet is not that big into the pot size. Now that's George in seat five. He moved from seat six. Allen's going to come into seat six. The action's over to Max, and we saw him call with a couple over cards once before, Dave. This time he's not going to with Queen Jack, and Mike takes it down. Take it down. Yeah, those are probably real. <laughs> yeah, I know. His head. Look at that. He looks like Mr. Clean out there. Dude. Mr. Clean. Yeah. Kind of a um, Mr. Clean and Gus Hansen. Right. A little bit of both. I think Shirley said that she likes bald guys. Does she? Yeah. Wow. Isn't Phil Ivy bald, too? He might be. I don't know. All right, we're going to take a look at our first chip count here of the night. Like you said, it's pretty uh, a pretty light game. Yeah. Uh, Joe there with the lead with 3,500 chips. Uh, George George in rebought. He's up to 3,200. Right. Amir won a couple of pots there. He's up to 2,000. He won that hand with the Jacks before. And Tommy's pulling up the rear there, Dave, with about $900. Yeah, well, he lost that early hand. He had an ace-king versus uh, Max's ace-queen. Right. And never really recovered from it. Now, uh, Corporation Mike here, he's got 8-5 here on the flop of King Deuce 5. And uh, he's going to bet it, and he's going to take it down. Looks like he got car uh, He actually had the best hand there with a pair of fives. Now you can watch live at the bike every Monday through Friday from 6 to 9 p.m. Pacific yeah. time. And Monday we've actually got a special, special event happening. We'll tell you about that in a little while. You like it's that actually gonna, It's going to be either okay, Monday yeah, or Tuesday. No, no, it's actually Monday. Oh, okay. So we're probably going to do limit hold'em this week on Tuesday. And right, right. And we'll tell our event special event, but it's a teaser. Right. You've got to stick around to find out. Well, it's not going to be like a theme night, put it that way. It's a teaser with what we're doing, with the type of game that we're doing. <laughs> I just want to make that clear. <laughs> We've got uh, four-way action here. Limped around, ace, ace, jack, and Max's got trip aces. And actually, 
It was Ace Deuce Jack, excuse me. Looked like there was that other Ace there, Dave. But Max is going to bet it anyways. He's got the best hand. And Allen's going to call with a gut shot wheel draw. Turns a queen. And Max is going to bet again here. He's going to bet 100. Well, he's got the best hand. I can't imagine that Allen's going to call. No, he ain't going to like that. He's not going to call. Take a look at Mo. He's, you know, he's... Look at that. Get filet mignon over there. No. Yeah. We've got a great surf and surf. There's actually like a five-star restaurant at the Bicycle Casino where you can get, I mean, like potato crust and sea bass... Uh, filet mignon, uh, surf and turf, lobster tail. I mean, really good food. Now, Mo, of course, he is Persian, so he's from Iran. And when I was looking at him, at him eat that food, he was eating it very European style. We you know with the fork in the left hand and the knife in the right hand and kind of feeding your, you, you know, your fork with your knife. You oh, know I, what I'm talking about? I, 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 very actually, English. Okay. Very English. I'm yeah. somewhat like of a kind of Neanderthal. Stuffing the food on the back of your fork. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. somewhat of a Neanderthal. I just kind of like, you know, <laughs> like a caveman. I just grab my food and just throw it in there. So. Now we got a raise here by seat five. It's yeah. Got Ace King. George there. Yeah. And we got a couple callers. So we, we're going to see a pot four ways. $200 pot now. Well, it's an $80 raise. Oh, right? $80. So I'm it's sorry. a $320 pot. And George has got trip aces. And let's see how he plays it. He's going to make play it straightforward. He's going to bet. A little small bet here, Dave, a hundred dollars. <laughs> and I don't think that anyone can call here. Yeah, and there's sometimes where you gotta understand you gotta look at it and go, well you Wait know. a minute, Amir's gonna make a move. So George did exactly what he was trying to do. He he bet weak to make himself look weak. And he's just gonna call now because he is in position. And what is Amir gonna do? Is he just gonna keep firing? He has to at this point. And there's no draw out there. The Jack of Clubs is such a perfect card because it's another club. And Amir checks. And look at this. George is going to check. And the river's a four. And now, you know, George is trying to induce a bluff here. Well, I love the way George played this hand. And I got to tell you, what is Amir going to do? He's going to check. He's just giving up. It's a $1,000 pot right now. And George is going to bet 800 here. And Amir can barely beat the board. i got to be honest. I don't understand the way Amir played this hand. He makes a move, right? Fine. That's good. You, let's say you put the guy on pocket kings or pocket queens, and he's scared of the ace. So you make a move, right? Great. That's no problem with that. But the guy calls you once. What, you're never going to follow through with it? Well, I think he was just trying to take it right down there with the check race and then just said, all right, I'm done with the hand. Okay. I, I mean, it's fair enough. Kind of an odd way to play it. Um, I gotta tell you, I like the way George played it too. I was about to say, you know, there are some times where you flop a monster, and you just gotta be content with taking what the pot is. You know, you're not gonna make any money on this pot. But sometimes you bet it like that, and somebody says, "Okay, this guy wouldn't bet an ace." So you kind of say, "Hey, maybe I can try to steal it from him." And sure enough, he induced, you know, he almost induced a bluff. Live straddle here by seat number four. And everyone's just going to limp in here, so we're going to see four-way action. It was 40 to call, so it's a $160 pot going four ways. Eight, seven, four. And look at Mike. He's got bottom two, two pair. Yeah. Now, Amir's got a, a gut shot. Mike's going to bet. 150. Good. At least he's not slow playing. He's going to bet 50. He's gotten rid of that bug. And it's not a bad flop for pocket fives. And with Mike betting, tough to give him credit for anything. I think Amir's going to call. He does call. So here we go to the turn. Turns at 10. Yet another overcard to Amir's fives. Amir checks. Mike's going to bet. And now he's going to bet 400. Kind of making it look like a steal, but Amir is not going to get involved. Well, you start thinking of hands that might, if Mike had a draw, like they, if Mike had, like, say, 6-9. Right. Well, then the 10 would have completed that draw. Um, and obviously he can't beat an 8 or a 7 either. He can only beat, really, a pure bluff. So you're kind of a Neanderthal. You just don't even use utensils, huh? No, I use them, but I, I actually, my friends in high school used to make fun of me because I'll grab them just like, well, I can't show everybody if I can, but kind of I just grab the fist. Like I, just, like a fist. Yeah, yeah. and I just kind of jam my food down. 
<laughs> my wife always yells at me. You know, she's always like, "You are a Neanderthal. You are just a caveman." <laughs> Basically, calling me the missing link. Now, this is going to be an interesting game between Carlos and Mike. Carlos has got pocket jacks, and he's going to raise. He's going to make it a hundred. And the go. button is where? And uh, button is in seat two. Mo is going to call, and and Mike's got ace king, and he's going to re-raise out of the blind. Tommy called in between with ace ten of hearts. Mike's going to make it 320 more. And look at this. Carl's going to push all in for the rest with jacks. And we'll see how much more it is. And Tommy obviously gets out of the way. And Mo gets out of the way pretty quickly. It's 900. So this is going to be a math problem for Mike here. All right, Carlos, I call. Well, anyways, he he's not even going to let us do the equation out. He calls with ace king. And Carlos yeah, I think is there's enough the money in the pot where he figures if the guy has queens or jacks, i got to call. Or a race, and there's the and hits the king. It's another king. Another king. Well, Carlos can hit one jack here and does not come. No. And Mike gets there. Well, at that point, you know, when Carlos made it 900, the pot, Dave, was about, you know, 900 more. Mike would need to call 900 to win. What about 1500? Yeah, about a 1500 dollar pot, getting a little less than, you know, maybe one point. Seven five to one or something like that. Yeah, and you start thinking, you go, okay, well, if the guy's got kings or aces, I'm I'm in really bad shape. But if he's got queens or right. less, I have to call. Right. So then you start thinking, okay, what percentage of the time will he have aces? What percentage of the time will he have kings and so forth? Right. Now at that time, and, and that and Carlos is, actually, is gone. This is actually the case here with jacks, is that you know brings it back to the question of jacks. If you have that equation and Mike holds jacks and it's the other way around, it's harder at that point in that situation to call with Jackson it is with ace king right it's well, almost like a tournament well it, well, it depends it's all a matter of things if, it, if you're just thinking of it as a, if, in a cash game you can also go okay what are the odds this guy is doing it with ace king right and if he's doing it with ace king and I'm getting one and a half to my one right well then I've got a call right but then again though if he's doing it with queens kings or aces then right. you're really in bad shape now we had a raise here by Amir and Mo called with ace ten and the flop comes ace high look at this Mo's gonna make a big check raise here and Amir's going to get away from it. Well, if you think about it, Ace King. One of the reasons Ace King is such a powerful hand, especially in like in a tournament, is because there's only two hands it's really dominated by. Yeah. Obviously, aces and kings. While jacks okay. can actually be dominated by aces, kings, and queens. And when you say dominated, I mean four to one underdog domination. Right. I asked it twice. Red Peter said it's working. Okay. You know what I do now? Again, Dave, because uh, I see a little post here by uh, the. The thread head or the thread starter Kev Math on 2 plus 2. If you want to follow a live thread start on the internet, 2 plus 2.com spelled out. Forums, Texas Hold'em section, mid and high limit, pot and no limit Hold'em section. Um, we are going to be dark next week on Thursday and Friday, Thanksgiving. Four players. But we're going to be playing uh, reruns. It's kind of a, the best of the live of the right. bike. Right. You can watch it next Thursday and Friday. If you, once you get sick of the uh, turkey and sick of your family, yep. kind of, you know, get away and turn your laptop on and watch live the bike. I know I can only deal with my family for about four hours. 100. Now, it was limped around here, and it got checked around, and Mike's going to bet 100. He's got 10 deuce, and it looks to be the best hand, and he's going to take it down. And he's not showing. I really like that. Mike's are really you running this table over? I gotta tell you. Are you having Thanksgiving at your house or your mom's house? Your mom, no, my mom's actually your, in New York. Uh, oh, my my your wife's mom's house. Yeah, my mother-in-law. Yeah. Um, actually, I think what we'll probably do is we're probably gonna do like a little Thanksgiving dinner on Tuesday, and I don't, I'm not exactly sure. To be with you. Marie Callender or something like that. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> One of my favorites. Sizzler. <laughs> I had no pair. Sizzler. Oh, some good memories of Sizzler. Raised to 80 here by seat two. Yeah, King Amir's got jack. King Jack off suit. Amir's playing a little more aggressive than he usually does, isn't he? I mean, his raise is pretty flop. And look at, and, and Joe is thinking of calling here, and he's going to call 10-9. Yeah, 10-9 suited. Well, he's, it's, uh, he's got position on Amir, so. And, and we're I, heads up. Yeah, this is one of those times where if, if Amir doesn't hit his hand, Joe might be able to take it away from him. Well, Queen 10 4. Joe's hit a pair, but Amir's open ended. Well, this is interesting. And it looks like Amir's going to bet in here as a semi bluff. He's going to bet 100. Well, he bets 100 into about a $200 pot. And Joe just calls. Yeah, he kind of prices in his own draw. Yep. 
Turn is a three, and now the pot's four hundred. Let's see if we can throw another hundred dollars in there. Another like say one fifty. Kind of prices his draw again. Well, he's gonna bet three hundred this time. Wow. I think he wants to take it down. Well, but Joe work. calls again. Yep. And now the pot's a thousand dollars, and the river's a seven, and Amir didn't get there. Well, what is Amir gonna do here? Well, it's is a he thousand dollar pot. How much does he have left there? Is he gonna move all in? I mean, he's missed his draw completely. He's got king high. I think he only has about 600 in front of him, Dave, but, and then plus the whites that he's playing with in his right Well, hand. I think at this point he's got to pick a spot. Right, he's just going to give up, and Joe's going to check it down. 10-9 is good here. Yeah, i got to tell you, I don't mind. Once he bets 300, he gets called on a turn, mm -hmm. and the pot is 700, and you only have 600 left. You know, you're not going to you're not gonna get him off the hands. No way. Well, I thought that Joe was going to check it down. He was going to turn over his cards, and now he's thinking, well, maybe I'm going to bet here. Because maybe my hand isn't good, or maybe a value bet? Could I get a call with ace-king here? What is it? I'm trying to figure out. Well, he I might thought. not think his hand is good, because you think about it. Okay, if Amir, this is all I'll throw at you. If Amir checks the river, right. it almost suggests that he had something, because he doesn't have to bluff. Are we? Let's. Yeah, they're just going to check it down. They're going to check check the river there, and it's kind of, yeah, a pair of tens. You know what I mean? Have you ever played in a game where, you know, a guy's betting, you're calling with kind of a weak holding, he's betting, and then he checks the river, and you're kind of like, oh, shoot. Right. Because I'm almost like, I would have almost rather see him bet it because he because he missed his draw. And when he checks it, it almost suggests that maybe he had a piece of the pop already. Right, he's checking it because he doesn't have to bet to win. Exactly. He's trying to, you know, not bet a mediocre holding here on the river. And I, that might have been the reason Joe said, they're going, uh-oh, did this guy have maybe a 10, a bigger 10 than me? Right, something like ace-10 or something yeah. like that. Yeah. You know, it's or funny, even a weak queen. You know, it's funny, my mother, she, you know, she works in the corporate world. She's a business manager for a large law firm in Boston. And so she works a lot. And she just said at one time, I don't know, this was about five, six years ago. Actually, it was actually started before I was went away to college. I'm fed up with Thanksgiving. Big family, I'm not cooking. We're going out to a restaurant. We're really? going to pay, you know, 500 bucks for eight people. Or so, you know, four, four or five hundred bucks for eight to ten people. Because I'm not doing this work. I got enough, you know, I got enough work that I got to deal with. <laughs> it would cost that amount almost anyways for the food and stuff and for the hors d'oeuvres. Hey, so teach why go through the heartache? Right, hey, teach you know? their own. Whatever works for you, right? <laughs> different strokes for different folks. Like we said last night, I mean, to be honest with you, Thanksgiving is just, to me, I, I love it. Football, food, and then sleep. <laughs> Man. I can't think of a better holiday. Race make it 80. <laughs> we get a raise to eighty dollars here by uh, Corporation Mike. He's got a good old do seven off suit there. Dude. Yeah. And Tommy playing the player is going to move all in from the big blind with Ace Jack. Yeah, and that's just playing the player. Yep. Now that's the difference between being weak tight and tight aggressive. You know, he's got 650. Now, Amir has about 650 as well. He's limped. But w why would you just try to call here with you only hoping that you're in a race, right, a, against Tommy? Against Tommy, it's such an easy laydown. It's ridiculous. Yeah. You can only hope that you're in a race. And, you know, maybe well, in a race, maybe, you know, yeah. as little as 20% of the time. And he lays it down. I mean, the thing with, with, on, with, with Amir there, you got to look at it and go, he only had $20 invested. Right. You know, if he had 150 or 200 dollars invested, and there were some odds, okay, well then maybe. Yeah. Come on. Once again, this is uh, not bluff night tonight. Instead, it's VIP night. We're looking for the best player award, and the best player tonight will get two tickets to uh, Paul, McCart Paul McCartney concert, the U.S. tour, 2005, and. Um, we need your help to pick the best player tonight. So please email us at live at the bike dot com and let us know who you think deserves tickets. <laughs> we had an email that just came in, Dave, regarding player comps here at the bike. Are there player comps that come around for uh, you know with poker playing here at the bike? And we have one of the best comps as we're going through a setup here that you could ever have. We have what's called a player's card, and when you play here at the bike at any game now or any game, I believe above the ten twenty level, right? Um, specifically this game. 
you get money oh, per so hour in rake back on your card. Yeah. Like at the 2040 game, every hour that you play, you get $5. Once you put in 20 hours a week, you get $5 an hour after. Yeah, it's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. Um, look at that look at the chip count here. Mike up to the lead now with 4,000 chips. Max also with 4,000. That makes for an interesting thing. Tommy up to about 700, bringing up the rear. Surprised he's not going to rebuy in, you know? Doesn't he want to cover Mike? So some players, Dave, that play at this casino, you know, you know, for many, many hours a month, um, you know, they receive hundreds of dollars a month on their yeah, players' I, mean, I, I honestly do not know how this casino even makes money. It's ridiculous. At the lower limits, you can use your points to buy food, and you get small amounts of money back. But in the bigger limits, I mean, I actually know players, Joe Wynn, not actually Joe Wynn, but oldest Joe Wynn, he said he's actually gotten checks for $700 a month. Right. I mean, absolutely ridiculous. Yep. I mean, $700 a month and just kickbacks? I mean, plus we give you free food. Button's going to move over there to Tommy Hoffnagel and see what won the World Series of Poker Dud High Champion, I believe. 1993, I think. 1998. 98. 98. Stud High Low, actually. Stud High Low? Yeah. But Stud, he's had a lot of... Stud is actually his game. He's had a lot of high Raz finishes, a lot of high Stud High finishes, and Stud High Low finishes in many tournaments. Five-way action here. King, King, eight with a couple spades. George is the best hand here with an eight. Eight, seven. And he's going to bet 60. And Mo. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. That no, that's Alan. Right. Alan's going to bet. Yeah. Now, see, the, I was going to say if it was George, I love the bet, because George is just as likely to bet as King as his eight. Now, look at Mo here. He's going to call with ace three. You think he's setting up a play here on the turn? <laughs> well, he's got the ace of spades also, so he can set up. He can maybe represent spades. Turns a nine. And Alan bets again. Now, Alan's not that deep, though. And Mo just calls? you got to think Mo's setting up a play here on the river, I right? would assume so. And the river's a five, and well, there's the spade that he can represent here. Yeah. Yeah, and he's going to bet it. And look at this. Look how quickly Alan folds, Dave. Yeah. Again, that's playing the player in position. And I was about to say, what was interesting, if George had the eight there, right. I love the play because George is just as likely to bet his three kings as right. his eight. Right. Now, Allen, we all know Allen is the same player. If he had a king there, what's he going to do? He's going to check it, of course. Right, right. Right. If he has an eight, he'll bet it, which is why Mo can smooth call. And because when a spade hits the river, Allen can, can beat nothing. He can't beat a king, can't beat spades. It can only beat a pure bluff, which is what Mo had. Nice play there by Mo. Playing the player. We've got a new player coming in a seat seven. We'll get his name soon enough. Now Amir in seat two, he's got ace king off suit on the button. And he's raised it up to eighty. And Mike's gonna call with Queen Four suited. And George, he's gonna call. Is he gonna call four five off suit in the big blind? And he is. Wow. And what was the raise? Eighty, so it's about two hundred and forty dollar pot going okay. three ways. Well, Jack ten eight here. Well, it's not a bad flop for Amir. Amir's got a gut shot with overcards. And he's bet here. He bets half the size of the pot, 120. Mike is not going to get involved. George is not going to get involved. And he takes it down. Too bad we lost Carlos there. Carlos only bought in for about $1,500 and uh, lost it on a couple of tough hands. Got a new player there in seat seven. Looks like he's buying in for fifteen hundred dollars. Button has moved over here to seat six, Corporation Mike. He's got Queen Six suited on the button, Dave. I think he's gonna play. He's gonna raise it. Well he, he Mike likes to raise almost every single time it's his button, regardless of his holdings. Makes it 80, and Allen's going to call out of position here with Jack-7 suited. You know, and, that, and that's the part of the, I mean, And Allen's Amir's going to call with 7-3 of clubs. Wow. 
Wow, five. what a flop for Allen here. Eight, five, seven. All it, with a couple spades, and Allen checks his pair in flush draw. And it gets checked to Mike, and he's going to bet. He's got a gut shot to the nine. He's going to open ended. Excuse and me. do you check raise this? Yeah, he is. It was a $170 bet here. Mike's had an open ended straight draw, and Allen's going to check raise. He's going to make it. And that should, and it should be easy for Amir to fold the hand. Yeah, he's going to make it 300 more, 470 total. And when Allen check raises you, that kind of signifies a lot of strength. Right, right. Pot's about, I want to say, $800 here. And it's going to be another 300 for Mike to call. And Mike's going to move all in with just a draw. And, and Allen calls. And Mike says, do you want to make a deal? How many times do you want to run it? Two or three times. Whatever you want to do, two or three times. And, and Alan's in great shape here. I mean, Alan basically... Alan, you, can, you guys can... They know that they can flip their cans over, right? Yeah, Alan actually... I mean, the funny thing is that... I guess they're going to run it three times. Yeah. Right? Well, there's the flush there for Alan. He's going to win it once. Again, Mike needs a nine. Oh, a queen does it. Oh, that's right. Yep. On the river's an eight. That's a big one for him. Oh, oh it's been a spade spades, still. Spades. Alan's going to win two out of the three. Well, Allen's hand was probably at least a 66% favorite. There. Yeah. I mean, you think about it. Mike needed a queen that wasn't a spade. Right. Or a nine or a four that wasn't a spade. Right. I mean, he was in bad shape. Basically six outs with two cards to come. Right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. he was lucky that he even got one. Yeah. Yeah, he was more like more like a three-to-one dog there. Probably, yeah. Like more like 75-25. And again... Not to harp on that running the hand multiple times because we do it every time we we we, uh, we see that on the show, but it's just a way to decrease the variance. When you run it three times, basically the pot is chopped into three pots. Whoever wins each time wins that pot. Right. Doesn't change the expected value of the hand at all. Right. Oftentimes it was done a long time ago just to keep the games going because there was a limited supply of no limit hold'em players, and if a couple of players went broke. You know, suddenly there's no game. So what they would do is they would run it more than twice, run it three times. At least, you know, usually one of the guys would win a third back and the game would continue. Yeah. Once again, we are live at the bike, folks. Playing No Limit Hold'em. Blinds are 10 and 20. I'm David Tuckman here with Bart Hansen. Feel free to email us at liveatthebike.com. Looks like uh, George Georgian has uh, got a little groupie there. Where's that? There was a, no, the email I just read. Oh. <laughs> Some girl named Kathy thinks he's sexy. <laughs> yeah, got to com compete there for Jesus' groupie. Is that? We got a raise here. Look at these, look at these hands. I believe it was, was it by Mike over there? Hey, look at these hands. Pocket fives. Everybody got the same crap. Queen 10 6 here, rainbow. Yeah. I want to say, is that. Uh, and Mike did raise pre flop and he's going to bet. Hun? Hun? Hun has the best hand? Yeah, Hun there with, with Hun? bottom okay. pair. But. And fold, fold, and Mike is going to take it down. Ask. Yeah. I showed George, I guess I got to show everybody Ace Queen choke. And that's a tough call for Hunt. I mean, he had the best hand there, but, you know, when you're calling a pre-flop raise with 6-7, you're not really looking for a queen-10-6 rainbow board. Dave, this guy's been on the show before. I don't know if you remember, but uh, I think maybe he was on when, uh, you know, when Shirley was in here. But, uh, yeah, his name is pronounced Hun. Hun. Like Attila the Hun, you know, king of the Huns, who ended up taking over Rome, or then it got into, well, not the Goths or the... I actually remember Busy this exact goss. conversation. You yeah. said the same thing, and then somebody said, no, it's Hannibal. Oh, <laughs> That's right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was deja vu for a second. <laughs> Amir's got pocket aces. And it's Hun Joe. His last name is Joe. Amir's brought it in here with, for 80 with aces. Mike's call with a suited queen. Queen rag suited. Now, unfortunately for him, he's got queen six of hearts, but Amir's got the ace of hearts in his hand. And we're heads up. Well, Mike doesn't really have a piece of this. 
Mirror. Does it really have a piece of it? Mirror's going to bat. <laughs> Pretty straightforward here. 100. That's 100, but sometimes we see Mike make moves if he doesn't think that a mirror, you know, had a piece of this. Well, that's the question. If you, if you put a mirror on ace-king here, can you take it away from him? King-queen or ace-jack? Well, you can't beat king, queen, or ace, jack. Right. There you go. Yeah, show him a king, queen. He's going to show the aces. Sometimes that's Mike's ploy, too, to kind of, if you keep asking somebody, right. and you keep, like, kind of throwing cards out there, you get your opponents to show you what they had, which obviously gives you information. <laughs> it was funny. I had a guy I was playing 2040 Limit hold him with today. Um, somebody said, asked him to see his hand. He said, I don't show anybody my hands whatsoever. Right. So I had raised under the gun with king, queen suited. And he folded his big blind to me. Uh, and then he showed me ace three. Because I think he wanted, you know, to know what I had raised him with. Right, of And course. I looked at him like, and I, and I, and I mucked my hand right. quietly. You know, I wasn't gonna A lot show of boys him. in there to see exactly right. what, yeah, right. Get a raise here by Mo. Ace Jack suited out of the blind. He's going to make it 200 more. But look at Tommy Huffnagel. He's got pocket aces. He's pulled the limp, Dave, Hello? under the gun. And he's going to limp re raise. Now, he doesn't have that much money. He's only got about $750 left. He's limp re raised here. Uh, yeah, about 800 I want to say, right around there. Yep. I and mean, you know that Mike's going to hate wanting to get rid of this hand, but Tommy has limp re raised. And who called? Did Mike call? Mike's going to call! Tommy limp re-raised, and Mike's going to call. Wow. wow. See, that's crazy. Mike was only in there for $20. Right. You're only in there for $20. Why are you risking it? I mean, if Mike had raised it to 200 and then you get that, okay. Yeah. But And here again, a clear-cut case. Again, we had the issue before with eights. And now, well, does Mo want to build money on the side with Mike? Or is he just out of there when Tommy limp Well, that's the thing. I mean, if you, see, if you're Mo with pocket eights and you've already yeah. invested $200, okay, it's a little bit of a decision. The action's back over to Mo. <laughs> it's uh, 550 here, I believe. And we're and Mo's, he's trying to figure out what he wants to do here. Again, this is one of the funniest things in the world. I'm not sure if anybody else can hear this or not, but we got a phone ringing in our ear. Yeah. And we're trying to get Tommy Huffnagel to turn his phone off, but he doesn't know how to turn his phone off. He doesn't know how to turn it to vibrate, the right, vibrate right. function. I mean, I mean, we're talking about a world-class <laughs> poker player who's played against the best in the world but can't turn his phone to vibrate. Look at this. Amazing. Well, now Mo's sitting there goes, wow, another player in there. Should I call? He makes the call. What is he hoping wow. for a side pot? I guess so. Well, Tommy's all in. The pot is about twenty-four hundred dollars. Yeah, and we're, they can build it on the side here. Four, five, six. Wow, George would have had a set of sixes. Yeah, and that's not a bad flop for Mike. Now, what yeah. is Mike gonna do? Mike's got a so, Mike is he's got a gut shot. Does he need to protect his hand on the side here? Yeah, he, he's gonna bet. Now, even if even though he has a even though he has a dry side pot. Yeah. He's also seen Tommy make this play with Ace King a couple times, which is why I think he got him to do this. Again, but that was on a short table, and you know Tommy's pulled the limp re-raise here. And no, no, obviously. I like the bet here by Mike on the side, though. Why let Mo try to get there for free? No, no, definitely. You have to. Yeah. You don't, don't know what Tommy has. Yeah. You have no idea what Tommy has. You guys. That's all it takes. Mo's and Mo said he's drunk. He's had one beer. <laughs> well, that's Mo. Mo can like you know he sniffs the bottle cap and he's he's wasted. <laughs> What is he thinking of here, though? What is he? I mean, I know the pot is twenty-four hundred dollars, but he's got ace jack of clubs. <laughs> he's got no he pair, no draw. Well, you need to say I go in, Mo. We don't, you, you don't need to say it, Mo. You can just say it. I might say you can just say it. And Mike is actually picked up, by the way. Has picked up now. He has six, six outs. Yep, a seven or any of the remaining eights. Right. And uh, of course, Tommy has one redraw to that draw. Roughly, do you have all the chair on the pot? 2500. It's about 2500. Pot is about 2500. And, and Mike has bet, what, 800 here on the side? Now, all Mike do is doing here is really, well, I was going to say he'd be protecting Tommy's hand, but Mo is almost drawing dead to beat Tommy. I mean, he needs runner and runner jacks. I think George said, I want to call a clock on Mo. See, five. 
Well, especially considering it's not really that big a decision here, is it? I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know what's going on here. Mo's having a good time, though. I think the one beer has gotten to him. Right. <laughs> oh, look at this. Stop clock. You're on the clock. Two minutes. Two minutes? It's a minute. It's a minute. Wow. Who set the clock at two minutes? We've got to change it to 30 seconds. It's already had two minutes. An hour? Yeah, I can 40 seconds. 10, 9, 8, What's funny because Moe's play, playing this hand like he might have something like pocket nines or pocket tens in reality. That's what you'd put him on, yeah, wouldn't yeah. you? Yeah. I mean, it's your mic. You're sitting here terrified going, oh, I must be beat. Right. I must right. be beat. Right. Mo is drunk. <laughs> Look at him. He said one beer. <laughs> Man, I know. We'll hope, have, hope for our uh, hope for uh, his sake, okay. Dave, that he's gonna he's gonna muck here. <laughs> yeah, as a great reminder, our our Mothers Against Drunk Driving tournament is coming up. Oh, mad! The bo good old mad. Yeah, I hope. Uh, I actually hope <laughs> Mo's wife is watching this because she's better come down here and pick him up. <laughs> I think Mo's hand is dead now. What happened? All right, your hand, hand is dead. dead. Oh, no, no. <laughs> and Don, Donna is, is trying to control the hand here. Right, right, yeah. Okay, well, anyways. Well, look at this. It's a three. That's no help so far. And the river's a deuce, but a straight's going to play on the board. Oh. Chop it up. Six high straight, chop it up. Wow. What and a George bad George is saying, beat. I got a set of sixes. All that, and they would have all chopped it up. And Mo's probably pissed off they didn't call. He would have chopped it up, too. <laughs> and the dealer, the dealer pushed Tommy the pot. <laughs> I give you back the 800. Well, welcome to the Twilight Zone, folks. Here we are. One thing great about poker, it is a lot of fun. Yes. Some people that play for a living, they forget that. You know, they start thinking, oh, it's all about money. i got to make money. And they get all stressed out. you got to remember to smile. Dave, i got to tell you, we've got a couple of early votes here for Tommy Huffnagel and some of the moves that he's put on. And I like some of the moves that he's put on this table so far, using his tight image. Yeah. Well, I mean, let's be honest. He got he got Mo and Mike to call all in bed, right? With, with almost, I mean, almost no chance because to win. I think win. he showed before that he did the same thing with Ace Jack and Ace King. Exactly. You know? I mean, the only reason I don't understand Mike's call though is even against Ace Jack and Ace King, you're only fifty fifty. Right. Well, that's why the call is just kind of a dumb one because again, you know, that's what you're hoping for. You're right. hoping that you're in a race. Yeah, what exactly. do you think Tommy's doing that with pocket sixes, pocket sevens? Right, and in a tournament, in a tournament, I don't mind gambling up once in a while because you've got to get a lot of chips. Right. And with blinds escalating, sometimes you have to take that little 4% edge. Right, right. But in a cash game, you know, okay, you might have a 4% edge half the time, and the other half the time you're completely dominated. Right. Where you're a 4 to 1 dog, and yeah, that's, exactly. that's the problem. You know, there are times in a tournament where you have to kind of stand your ground. And I think that's called structured hand analysis. I mean, you can actually figure out pot odds with percentages by saying, you know, I put this guy on an overpair to my hand, you know, 80% of the time. So 80% of the time, I'm going to be an 80% underdog. And the right. other 20% of the time, I'm only going to be a 50-50. Yeah. I don't you know? We had a raise here by Han, and he's going to take it down. And look at that. What a I was going to say, you know, the three on the turn, it gave so many more outs. A two chopped it up. A seven gave uh, Mike the win. Right. And an eight gave Mike the win. Suddenly picked up and went from two outs to six outs to ten outs. <laughs> Haven't heard much from Action Show win, huh? No, we Made that one bluff, and that was it. Yeah. Real quiet tonight. Button's going to move over here to seat nine. Look at Kev Math out of Syracuse, but he's still watching our show, even though the Syracuse Orange Men are on tonight. Yeah. And I'm sure it's probably snowing. <laughs> but once it starts snowing, it doesn't stop until, like, what, April 3rd? <laughs> right, right. Live straddle here by Corporation Mike. Did you ever go trace lane when you were in circus? No. No? No. Four-way action here. $160 pawn. King, queen, seven. Oh, George has got an open-ended straight draw here. Nice flop for him. And he's going to bet, I think. 
Yeah. I guess I like George's game tonight. I was really hoping I could criticize him again. It was such a lovely week. I didn't have to talk to him all week. <laughs> but uh, He really came up to you and said, I'm not talking to you, huh? Well, I mean, he did it half in jest. Uh, but, <laughs> but I like the way, I mean, George is now, he's bet his draws. He's bet his, he bet when he had three aces with a king kicker. Yeah. Did he show, though? Yeah, I think he showed one card. Don't yeah. show. Again, though, I mean, when we were talking about mascots earlier, we used to roll that little, I forget what they call the guy, the little orange man dude. I think it's the orange man. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, of course. The, he's like an orange ball with legs. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> once you get him on the ground, you start kicking him. I think he's kind of sexy. It's usually a girl. Exactly. That's, that's why I said it. I mean, it's a kind of <laughs> sexy little orange ball. <laughs> Always oh, turned me on. I tell you, call me sick or something. But, but they have know. a name for that guy or girl, and I forget what it's called. Otto. Oh, that's what it is. It's Otto, Otto the orange. the orange man. Yeah. Yeah. I was talking about tray slang. I can't believe you never did that. You never took like you know the cafeteria trays that you put your food on, and you sit on them and you go you know you go slang. <laughs> I mean it's great after you know a lot of drinks. Limped, limped around here. All diamonds out there. Jack eight seven. Nobody has a diamond or a pair. Yeah. Turn is a four. Is anybody going to bet this or what? Because still, ace high is good. And now Mike is going to bet. And Mike, Mike said, holy shit. <laughs> Mike put, takes down a bluff there with five nine of hearts. And Tommy's gotten a couple of really tough beats. I mean, he had ace queen in there. Like I, we were talking about, we're trying to, we're trying to figure out who's the best player tonight, right? And who's going to get the Paul McCartney tickets? Now Tommy's not making any money tonight, but he's gotten his money in with ace king against ace queen, and he's gotten his money in with aces against eights and ace jack of clubs. Yep. And hasn't won any money on those pots. Now we got ace king suited here, an ace queen suited, and an ace ten of clubs. So this could be an interesting hand. And it was limped by seat eight with ace king of hearts, and Tommy Huffnagel's gonna race with with ace queen suit. He's gonna make it eighty. Now look at this. Allen's gonna call here with ace ten, Dave, out of position. Well it's ace ten suited. Yeah. I mean look at the suits that are represented here. Hearts, clubs, and But Allen has the betting uh, excuse me, Tommy has the betting lead. And the flop comes out ten, ten, eight. What a flop for Allen. And he checks it, of course. Dave. Surprise, surprise. And that's how you can play the player. If Allen had an 8, he'd bet it. If he had right. a 10, he checks. Tommy bets 200. And now what Allen's going to call? He's out of position. It's tough to slow play out of position. I just. Uh... And now Max can't overcall here with Ace King, can he? Mo is a nut tonight. Can Max overcall with Ace King here? He's going to overcall. He's going to overcall with Ace King here, Dave. Yeah. And look at Tommy. He can't be happy now. The pot's about $850. No, he hates his hand. Well, he took one shot at it, and he's done with it. The thing is, though, is he might have bought himself a free card, because watch what's going to happen. Allen's going right. to check the turn. Right. Max is going to check. Let's see if Tommy course. picks up a spade draw here, exactly. and, he'll, and he'll take a card. He's going to take a card no matter what comes. Turns a seven. That's not stupid. And now Max has picked up a draw. <laughs> And it goes check, 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 and the river's a heart. Bam. Look at this, and Max makes a backdoor flush. Allen slow played himself into the ground. Oh, man, and you knew it was going to happen. We just thought maybe it would happen yeah. with spades, but it happens with hearts. And look at this, though. Max just calls. He just calls with the nut flush. He didn't raise. You, you scared? Are, you scared of a, are you scared of a full house? Wow, it was a $500 bet on the river. Max just called. Unless, he took down an $1,800. Unless Allen is all in. Is Allen all in? No. He bet only bet 500. Wow, how do you not raise that? Dave, I know that you're really friendly with Alan. And why can't you just pull him aside and tell him, just bet your hand, Alan? I've told him, I've told him. You know, some people, you know, you can't change, uh, you can't change uh, leopard stripes. <laughs> can't uh, teach a dog new tricks, is that the saying? No, I like leopard stripes. <laughs> Stick with what I say. Wow. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, and you knew it was going to happen. We actually said, we said watch, Allen's going to check the turn. Right. And right. if a spade comes out, you know they're both going to check, and then maybe, and we just didn't. Yeah. 
Man, I just think that Max gets, obviously, Allen gets negative points there for that play. And I, I got to tell you, I think I would put some sort of race. I, mean, I know in no limit that you're always vulnerable to a re-raise that's going to expose your stack, but Allen doesn't have that much more. Yeah, Allen's it's not that worth deep. it for that value. If he's got it, he's got it. You lose a little bit more. Definitely. It's not like Allen's 100,000 behind. You know? Right, exactly. If you're 50,000 behind and Allen, okay, then you're reopening yourself to a right, big re-raise. Right. Allen's got 700 left. Come on. Right, right. It's a no-brainer. Max has got a flush draw here. Allen's got a gut shot there to the six. <laughs> I mean, you can't. I, I, I got to be honest. I like. I now, like Tommy. George is in the hand here, but we can't see what he has. Right. Tommy bets in position when he gets checked to him, and then when Tommy bets, and Allen calls, how do you overcall these? I mean, I can't give Max any points for that. Now George made a bet here with King Nine. He had nothing. Max called with a flush draw, but look at this. Max had a pair in a flush draw. And uh, he's got trips on the river, and George is going to bet, thinking he needs to bet here to win because he's on a bluff. And now Max raises. Well, and obviously, and George's got nothing to call him. Yeah. And some people make the argument, they go, well, what's the point of raising? The guy's not going to call me. You have no idea what this guy has. And you have no idea what he'll call you with. There's also value to not showing your hand, especially in no limit holding. Got an email here from Jeff Klein. He was actually... Uh, was he in this game? Yeah, he was game? playing Limit Hold'em here. He came here on Monday. I, oh, I forget okay. his... Uh, I thought yeah, I recognized the name. What was his uh, 2 plus 2 name? I think it was Scant or something. Anyways. Oh, Shant. Shant, that's right. There that's you go. Right. He says uh, he would be down here four and three or four nights a week if uh, you know he didn't live up in Northridge. So, and he was asking us, where do we live? Dave, you live in Burbank. I do live in Burbank. And I live in uh, <coughs> Beverly Hills. Really? <laughs> 90210? Uh, no, not 90210, but... Look at the Broadway out there. Yeah. King, queen, king, queen, king, nine. <laughs> and Mike's in great shape with tens because all the kings and queens are almost dead. Yep, raised there by Mike. Look at this, queen, ten, four. Oh, this is huge. Two players hit top here, and Mike's got a set. Oh, uh, And, now if Mike and Mike's going to bet. He's going to bet it, Dave. Finally, great play. he bets 300 here. Now, this is great play by Mike because he's not going to slow play it. The diamond. And Allen's going to raise here with King Queen. And Hun might get himself in trouble too here. He's got top pair with a King Kicker. Well, Mike is bet. Oh. Allen has raised to 400 more. Allen's made it 700 straight. Oh, I love and this. And the action's over to Hun. And this is exactly why you don't slow play. Is Allen all in here? Yeah. Allen is all in for 700. And uh, let's see what's going to happen here with Hun. This is exactly why you don't slow play. You slow play this hand. Allen probably checks it too. Who knows? Well, I think, and we're heads up here. The pot's going to be about fourteen hundred dollars. And Allen's in terrible shape. He's got no diamond in his hand. He, he he's almost drawing dead. Wait a minute. Does Allen have more? Mi oh, Mike says, "All right, I'll call." All right, and they're all in. Yeah, and, and you can run this sixteen times. I don't think Allen's going to win any of them. Yeah, and now he's drawing dead. Or was Jack? Yeah, we're the same hand. Yeah, he needed some sort of jack on the turn, and then the funny thing is, is straight. in actuality, yeah. Actually, if Mike had checked that flop, he might have gotten yeah. Allen and the other guy in. But I'm never gonna yeah, say. I, like I mean, we were all over Mike last week because he was. As long as Mike stays consistent when he bets his bluffs and his good hands, that's the key. It doesn't matter that in that case, maybe a slow play might have gotten somebody else in there for one bet. I mean, I gotta be honest. You, know? you ask a lot of the professionals that play here on a regular basis. They say that Mike is one of the scariest players to play because you never know where he's at. Right. Okay, he's kind of got that Gus Hansen thing going. But if he's only going to bet his bluffs and he's going to check his made hands, well, then he it, it, it gives up everything that he ha he's worked for. If he starts betting his made hands like that, he can really kick ass. Look at this, Dave. we got a, another email here from Sarah Churchwell. Sarah says, Kathy's right. That man is straight up talking about George and Seat 5. Pure sex hormones. Can a single L.A. woman get some of that? Wow. Look at that. The Greek uh, poker god. Uh, Man. <laughs> Jeez. King three deuce here. Now, Mike's got pocket nines. Did he not raise here? No, he did not raise. Okay. Chose to limp in. Now Play we got a slow. bet here by Max. He has top pair. Now does Mike want to get involved? There's one overcard, and it's the pot is an unraised pot. Awful lot of people in that pot, and he's going to raise it. One fifty. Going to make it one fifty. Let's 
So the action's back over to Max. And Max has a king with not the best kicker, but again, you're playing against Mike. Well, you gotta think, okay, would Mike raise with king jack, king queen, yeah. or ace king? And this flop isn't really draw heavy, and now will Mike take a card here because... Well, look at this now, and, and Mike, Max is gonna come out and bet now. Yeah, he's not gonna give him a free card, just in case, just in case Mike had 4-5. Yeah, he tells him what he had. That's what he said. He said, once you called the raise, I was done with it. He figured to take a shot. Get wow. Mo some more beer. Let's get him live enough. That's I, I, I was I was just absolutely hysterical. And uh, we have confiscated Tommy Huffnagel's phone. If you're going to bring a phone to the table, you better know the functionality of it. <laughs> we, I hear we have it in like a desk drawer and it's, it's, it's buzzing away. Yeah. <laughs> He's a busy man. God, I mean, the Greek polka god is like, uh, you know, oh, all Mo's, the girls want him, huh? Mo's got pocket aces here in seat nine. Wow. He's in the big blind. I got some money Let's no, see I how much more he's going to raise it to. Yeah, right? nobody really has much of anything. Alan has ace deuce suited and he sometimes gets himself in trouble with these, these kind of mediocre holdings. Well, Mo's going to raise here, and he's going to make it 140. 30. 130, okay. Now, look at Tommy Huffnagel. He's got pocket fives. Does he have the type of money to make this call? How much has he got behind him? Wow, he only has 400 behind him, Dave? Wow, and to call with pocket fives? He only has 200 now. We said he only has 400. Yeah, I mean, to call with pocket yeah, fives, that's a little you're questionable. Kinda, don't you need the implied odds? And you're How right. And look at all these players call here. Mike, Allen, I mean, kind of by Tommy calling, kind of, you know, priced everybody in. Well, maybe that's what Tommy thought. Maybe Tommy uh, thought if I just call, I can get everybody else to call. Maybe I can hit my five. And look at this, a set of fives. And Allen, oh, I thought Allen had a flush draw, but Tommy's got the f set of fives. And the pot is about $650. Yeah, and there's no way Tommy's not going to double up here. And Mo's just going to move all in here. Yeah, and Tommy's going to call, obviously. And I don't think anybody else can even come close to calling this. Well, if Tommy only has about 200 behind there, I mean, Tommy's going to... Well, wait a minute. He's got some white chips back there, too, Dave. He's going to make the call. He had more money than we uh, thought. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, that didn't Yeah, that didn't make a lot of sense, but now we realize he had more money. So He actually had closer to $800 when he made that call. Yeah, and this is a great time for... And, uh, you know, it was interesting. Yeah, and Mo hates it. Once Tommy calls him, Mo is sick. Yeah. Because Mo knows if Tommy calls my all-in bet, he's well, got at least two pairs. They say they're going to run it twice here. First time is a 10. Rivers is 7. Tommy wins that one. Queen here. And the Rivers a jack, and Tommy wins them both, Dave. Yeah. And that pot, I want to say, if Tommy had 800 there, is going to be over $2,000, about a $2,200 pot there that Tommy takes down. Yeah. Now, I was going to say there, obviously, once, once when, when Mo makes that move in and Tommy calls, Mo has to know Tommy's either got a set, king, queen, or maybe I can hope that he's got ace, king. Yeah. Because the only thing he's going to have is he's going to call me with here. Well, again, and that makes it different because I was going to say, well, maybe that subtracts some points there from Tommy. I'm getting word that Tommy had more like 900 or 950, and maybe he thought with a lot of loose players behind him, he could call. He's almost getting like what you say around 10 to 1 your money, but when everyone else comes in, he's getting even more than that. Well, that's in what the table. He, yeah. he might have. He might have thought. Listen, I got a, a lot of loose players here. If I if I smooth call a $130 bet, yeah. maybe that'll induce everybody else to call. Right. I know there are a lot of times where, I mean, let's say I'm playing in a, in a limit game. Sometimes if I have like ace rag suited, sometimes I'll limp in rather than raise to induce three or four more people to call. Dave, take a look here. Uh, Tommy just ran away. He, he he just discovered that we took his phone. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, man, this show is really the Twilight Zone tonight, huh? Live at the bike with David Tuckman and Bart Hansen. Play No Limit Hold'em. Blinds are 10 and 20. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at liveatthebike.com. It's up to you. If you told me I got two overs, I would have called you. Are you going to play, Joe, or what? King Queen. Now, uh, looks like Han raised there. Gonna take it down. 
Jack 10 offsuit. Now just addressing Garland here on 2 plus 2, and in actuality he is correct. Obviously once you put your money in the pot, it is, and, and his criticism here was he was talking about uh, when I said, wow, he's only got $20 invested, why, why are you making the call? And obviously that should not even influence your reason to call or raise or fold. But sometimes you've got to look at the pot size, and you've got to figure it out. Okay, it's more of not how much money I've invested, but how much money is in the pot. And is it worth it for me to call with a hand that is probably badly dominated, or at best 50-50? But thank you, Garland. Appreciate it. The button is in seat nine. That's Mo. Once again, we love hearing your criticism. We love hearing your compliments. Only makes us better. Check one. Yeah, Mo's still got the best hand here with Ace High, and he's going to bet using his position. Actually, he's going to move all in. He's only got about, what, about $250 there. Bad beat there. Now, sometimes it's really important when you're playing a limit hold'em game or a no limit hold'em game to know the players at your table. You know, sometimes I'll limp in. If a table's relatively loose, I can limp in in kind of like middle position with a weak holding like ace four of hearts or something like that. Not one of my favorite hands, but I can limp in knowing that six or seven people might limp in behind me. Now, ace four of hearts is not a bad hand playing it multi-way. But I certainly don't want to get that hand's heads up against a razor. Button has moved all the way to seat four. Got a couple of players taking a break here. So we're a little short. We've only got five hand, five people in the pot. A couple of limpers here. And we got a, actually, really interesting here. Seat eight, Max limped in with ace, queen of hearts. And then Mike re-raised him, or raised him actually, with nine five spades. And Max just smooth calls. And we got about a $200 pot to the flop. Flop is ace four jack, two clubs, and Max flop top pair. And um, he's going to bet it right out. Bets it right into Mike. Interesting. Why not let him? Why not do a little check raise there? Mike's got nothing here, though. Mike's got nine five of spades. Sometimes a matter of just posturing. I believe you. People don't think they can just run you over. Button moves over to seat five. That's George. The Greek poker god. So what is the Greek the Greek god of love? I don't know what the Greek god of poker is, because that's not George, but the Greek god of love, maybe that's him. Eros? E R O S, okay. Hearing that from Isaac here. Help me out. Small blind is Alan, ten dollars. Big blind is Max, he's in there for twenty. And the action will be to Mo. He's under the gun. Took my ace, right? Moe's out. Look at this. Allen's got pocket kings in a shorthanded game. And obviously Allen has already looked at his cards because he is cutting a raise up here. Looks like he's going to raise it up to about $130. Can raise. $130. More. Makes it 100 more, so it's actually $120 total. And uh, Max is going to call with Queen 7 of hearts. And he is badly dominated. George is going to fold, Joe folds, and it's heads up here. To the flop, pot is about, I want to say, close to three, actually about $280. Two aces out there, not terrible for uh, for kings. You're almost more scared of one ace. And Allen has to throw a little bet in there, see where he's at. And Max throws away queen seven. Thank you. 
Once again, this is a cash game. So people can get up and leave when they want to. They can always put more money on the table. What you normally watch on TV is tournament play. And obviously it's edited, so you're seeing the best hands of the night. Right. Or actually the best hands of the, of the tournament even. Here this is completely live, unedited, unscripted. And uh, players can get up and take a walk for 20 minutes if they want to. They don't have to worry about losing blinds. They don't get blinded off. Um, Excuse me, Dave. I had to go yes. and take care of a little, a little bit of uh, business. Business? Okay. Not that kind of business. I, 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 I'm not sure. <laughs> was I inferring that it was some sort of business? <laughs> flop is 10, 6, 4. A couple of spades out there. Uh, this flop has missed everybody completely. Joe's still got the best hand with ace-queen. It's amazing how often that happens, huh? Yeah. Look at this, the turns of five of spades. Well, Doyle Brunson likes to say these are the pots that kind of like, you know, the pots in the middle of nowhere. He's like, these are the ones that I like to pick up. Nobody has anything. Now we get a bet here by uh, Joe. He's got ace-queen, and he's going to pick it up here. Yeah, well, he's got the best hand. Right. And then he takes it down. I got a nickel on him with this guy over here. He's one for one in bets against him. And uh, Mike, I think, is stuck a little bit here tonight, Dave. But he hasn't, Corporation seen a, Mike? Yeah, we haven't seen a lot of movement from him. Well, he actually, he was stuck early. He actually made it all back when he had Ace-King versus Carlos's Jacks. Yeah. But he was stuck about $1,000. I think he's actually up a couple, a little, a couple hundred now. George is going to limp here. Alan limps. Yes, sir. And Mo's going to raise. He's got 4 8 off suit. Only a couple days ago. And he's going to move all in, Dave. Remember what he, what he turned over before? He had aces. Mo's all in with 4 8? Yep. Wow. I guess he's trying to pick up the loose $100 here, huh? Well, C 8's got an ace jack off suit. That's the only thing that could call his hand all in, it looks like. Although, you know, George, George might be having a, re I think he might. Suited on, on it wasn't a six. Was a, a, a and he's going to throw it away. I was going to say George maybe having a read on Mo here. <laughs> well, I mean, George can say that he has a read on these players all he wants, and he might be right. But it doesn't count until you make the call. You know, with ace nine, I get a read on you. You did it with the draw, but I'm going to fold. Right. You know what I mean? I remember, okay. Same lip service than we lip service when we hear somebody say, "Oh, I can kill this game." Well, then show right. it to us. Right, right. Well, here we go with another chip count here. So wow, Max, look at him. Fifty six hundred. And uh, Mo is down at the bottom there with five hundred. But Mike, yeah, he, like you said, he's creeped back up to four thousand. Yeah, and Tommy Huffnagel electric gets a set of fives. He uh, doubled up to about sixteen hundred. Wow, and Mike's got Ace King in seat four this hand. He's raised. It looks like. Excuse me, no, he's in the small, where's the button this hand? It's in seat three, no, seat one, seat nine, sorry. So Mike limped in with ace king. I think he's going to pull the limp re-raise here, but seat eight's raised with pocket kings. Yeah, he's in bad shape. Oh, Mike's just going to call here with ace king. I thought he might set up the limp re-raise. And look at that, George is in there with four six of spades. Four six of spades, $300 pot here going three ways. Queen deuce jack. But that's not a bad, bad flop for ace king, especially with the ace of hearts. And, uh, you know, I mean, because he's got a gut shot with overcards. But it gets checked to Max, and Max is going to bet. He's going to bet 200. Look at this. Mike is going to check raise to 600. And, uh -oh. and Max quickly calls. Well, Mike needs an, uh, a running hearts here, an ace or a 10. He's got some outs. Now, wait a minute. Did he, yeah, he, I think Max said call. Yeah, he just calls yeah. here. So the pot is $1,500. And Max is in position here. So if Mike continues to fight. Again, though, did Max. I don't know what the, what the delay here is at the table. I, I guess it's changing chips. Okay. Yeah, okay. So Max has position. And they're both so, pretty deep. You know, is Mike going to keep firing? Here we go to the turn. Turns a queen. Not well, a good a, card for Mike. Well, I got to tell you, it's a scary card for both of them. Yeah. Because think about it. If you raise the queen, well, now you're beat if you have kings. Again, wow. the, the pot is about fifteen hundred dollars here. Yeah, that's that's always an action killer when that top well, pair pairs. I mean, to hey, I mean, this guy just raised it. Is he raising with a flush draw? Is he just making a move on me, or did he actually have say king queen or ace queen? Because I can't beat a queen now if I've got kings. Now Max bets a thousand, and Mike yeah. is going to fold. 
just real tough for Mike to play because, you know, Max could have a queen. And if you're betting into the nuts, it's always I, tough. I would have been, it would have been interesting to see if Mike had bet there what Max would have done. Yeah. You know? Been real interesting. Puts, puts an overpair in a very tough spot when you get, you know, when the overpair sometimes, too, I mean, sometimes the overpair, if you're in position, will just smooth call the check raise of the flop because you, you know your hand's good, but you're going to want the guy to continue to fire at you. Right. And then all of a sudden, bang, top pair of pairs on the board. Now where am I at with my overpair? Right. Now you just got to hope that the guy was betting on a draw, like, you know, he had a heart draw or a straight draw or something like that. every way. And that uh, is a perfect time for what we call, you know, the uh, much criticized stop bet. Little blocker bet in there. You know, you price in your uh, your draw. Your draw, because can the guy really raise? I mean, is did, yeah. The is problem, he scared? Yeah, the problem is if, in, in Mike's case, he didn't really have much of a draw. If the guy had a queen, he's almost yeah, dead. Right. But that's you know one of the most effective times on the stop bet when the top pair pairs there. Now, this is interesting. Getting George with king queen, which is a, an easily dominated hand, and Allen with ace king. But Max with ace nine outflops them both. But Amir bets right here with six nine. And look at this, Dave. Allen, he limped in with ace king pre flop, and now he's going to call here on the flop. We see it time and time yeah, again. Yeah, one of the biggest mistakes I could ever see is playing it slow yep. and then trapping yourself on the flop. Turn is an eight. And the reason why is look, if, if it turn came ace, his hand would be no good. Exactly. He's basically drawing the three outs. He needs a king and a king only or some sort of running hearts. Look at this. Amir is going to move all in here. Well, now he's got top pair with an open and straight draw. Let's see how much it is. It's about 700. It's why I say all the time, I go, and Max lays down the ace nine like it was nothing there, Dave. Wow. It's a real tight lay down. Yeah. I mean, to me, you've got to throw in a little raise in there at the ace nine, see where you're at. Right. If you're going to smooth call yourself on the flop in position, sometimes you get you know, a little bit chickened out there on yeah, the exactly. turn. I mean, the guy moves all in. If he moved all in for 700 I'd say into about a $500 pot. Well, he played it so passively. I think yeah. Amir actually thought his hand was the best hand. Well, and then, again, Max, you just don't know. You know, yeah. you've never given yourself any information by playing it in that manner. It's sometimes it's like if you play it in that manner, if you call the flop, don't you think that you actually have to go ahead and call the turn now? Well, you're, you know, you're inducing, I mean, you're, yeah, exactly, you're allowing this player to think he has the best hand. Right. Can you call Kina? It's sometimes like Can we say, when you have to call the river when you've checked the turn, because you've yeah. inherently induced this bluff, even right. if your hand isn't that strong. Joe's got a king. I mean, you saw me playing 36 last night. You saw me actually call down one of our players with ace high. Right. Because I had checked the turn. Now, uh, C2 is going to bet here a mere bottom pair, and Joe calls top pair weak kicker. Two hundred dollar bet, a hundred dollar bet. Excuse me. Turn is a four, and look at this. Amir picks up two pair now. Yeah, but Joe is open ended. Amir bets here again. He's gonna bet three hundred, and Joe quickly calls. Pops Tim's about nine hundred. Oh. The river's an ace, and there's the straight for Joe. He's made the wheel. Joe got there. Now this is the only question. Now it could be an action killer if Joe bets this. It doesn't it kind of smell like he has aces up? Well, Amir's gonna call him. Amir's going to call him. Well, obviously, Amir can't beat any real form of two pair there on that board. No, obviously. He can only beat a bluff. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when you work that back in your head, can Amir safely lay that hand down at any point? Now, uh, on the river, excuse me, Joe bet 300 into about a $900 pot. Amir can only beat one pair there on the board, right? He right. can't beat any three. And what was Joe calling with on the flop and on the turn? Right. And then the interesting thing is, okay, if Joe was calling with a king and only a king... Why would Joe bet when the ace hit? Right? That's kind of an odd play. Now, if you put him on open in the straight draw, the flop was king, deuce, five, right? Well, that would make him three, four, which and the ace would have completed the straight. Well, the other thing, though, too, is that Joe was in the blind, and maybe he would bet the river when a scary card comes again, kind of like a little blocker bet if he had something like king, eight, or king, nine. Yeah, Joe, he knows that Amir can't raise yeah. one card to a straight, you know. Joe, so yeah, Joe is definitely capable of doing that. And Amir did just call with two pair there, so... Seven-way action looked like it was limped around. So we got a hundred and forty-dollar pot. Great flop for Max. He's got overcards and a flush draw. Seven, four, three. The nut flush draw. Now Mike is. Uh, Mike's got second pair. Eighty. But it got checked to Amir, and Amir is going to bet with second pair. Weak kicker. Amir really aggressive today. I mean, we. we he's always been somewhat passive, but today, really kind of turning up the heat. And Mike calls. Now, is this hand good enough to check raise here if you're uh, Max? 
The flop is actually 4-7-3 with two hearts. There are three players. And Max just calls. Here we go to the turn, and there's the heart, Dave. He's got the nut flush. And Mike's going to come out, and he's going to represent. He's going to bet 300. And he's going to try. Obviously, it's not going to work. And Max just calls. He's got the nut flush. He's in position. And the river's an ace. And let's see, did Mike bet again here? Or is Mike going to shut down? No, yeah. he checked. And now Max is going to bet 500. Yeah. And all Mike has is a pair of fours here. Yeah, he can't beat anything. Yeah. I mean, what did the guy call on the turn with? What did he call on the flop with? No, no, it's a, it's a clear fold here from yeah. Mike. All right. Keep pushing me around, man. Yeah. Away from that and Max is kind of pushing the table around, right? Yeah, Max is the big winner tonight so far. I don't think he's um, in the running for the best player award, though. Right. But I do think he is uh, He's definitely winning the most money. Again, we are here live at the bike. We stream cash games. We've got an email here from uh, R. Selman, too, wanting to know what our up-to-date schedule was. Six to nine, Monday through Friday, Pacific time, Dave. So that's East Coast time? That would be ten to, uh, excuse me, nine to twelve. And what about in Holland? Holland, I believe, is nine hours ahead of here. So it would be about, uh, let's do it, about 3 a.m.? 3 a.m. to 6 p.m.? 3 to 6 a.m.? 3 to 6 a.m.? Yeah. Okay. In Iceland, you know, we can do the math there, too, for our buddy Ingvar over there. <laughs> now, Mike is raised here on the button with 810 off suit. Forty dollars. I'm going to see a couple. Calls. That's funny. Some people like to call. Some people like to call raises with speculative hands, thinking, "Wow, if I hit my hands and the guy has aces, I can win a big pot." We always point out that Mike rarely has, right, what he might be showing he has. He really he has, have, a, you know, that big of a hand. He could have anything. Get a four or five. He could have pocket aces. Well, he's got the best hand here. I mean, he's actually going to chop it up with a mirror. They both have a. Well, well, let's see if anybody bets this because it's a completely chopped pot. Yeah, he is going to bet. Ev and everyone plays the board. And I think he might he might steal it here, Dave. Well, he's gotten one person to fold already. I mean, even if just one person calls him, he, he's made some money on the play. That's right, because he's not gonna he's gonna chop it in half instead of chopping in thirds. Right. Now. Let's see if Amir smells it. I mean, do you want to make the call though to chop it in half too? You know, I mean, what do you? I actually made a call last night too that I was questioning myself when I played the board. Right. Against Action Joe Wynn in the 30 game, because I know he's an angler. He showed me one card, Dave, and I thought that he might have been betting on, you know, a similar draw. And uh, I made a $60 caught in the river for a chop pot, and he had it. Yeah. Mike takes it down there. Amir throws it away. Would have been a great play if Amir actually put him on the, uh, put him on the, on the, on the nothing, put him on a chop pot, and he re-raises him. Tough to make a check raise with that type of board, though. I mean, definitely is. And Mike's gonna raise again well, with Jack Six offsuit. A lot of, a lot of inherent value in that hand. He's gonna make it seventy to go. And is George? George is called. I think again, this is classic playing the player. George, yeah, now, George, George this, is called with Ace Deuce offsuit here. And he's cool. on the button. I got uh, the only thing that's weird though is if you think you have the best hand, why not why raise, not raise, raise right. and get ace out, eight out of there? And it got checked around, so George is not using the button to bet there. Turns a queen, and let's see if Mike fires now. Two ten. He's gonna bet two ten. Well, if George has an opportunity to take this one down. Well, I, I just don't understand if you're gonna call with ace deuce and then not use your position to take the pot away. Why are you calling with ace deuce? Yeah, I don't really know what George is thinking yeah. there. I think Mike showed it, too. I mean, I have no problem with not betting ace-deuce, because ace-deuce is a pretty much a garbage hand. But then why call the raise pre-flop? Right. Well, it's because you can hit an ace, get lucky. Look at this. SU 47, Florida 47 at halftime, Dave. Then, of course, Syracuse has a big game against Notre Dame tomorrow. And what is Syracuse's record? One and nine. They have one win against Albany. Hey, believe in Syracuse. <laughs> believe in Syracuse. Wouldn't it be great if Syracuse actually pulled it off and beat Notre Dame? Oh, man. How many points are they giving? My God. 82. <laughs> <laughs> there or thereabouts. 
Ace nine three there, Jax. Well, Mike Ray's pre flop and he's hit top pair and he's gonna bet again. One twenty. And I mean uh, how long I mean you wonder and look at this, is Amir gonna make a move here? I was wondering how long maybe someone figures you know Yeah, he's gonna check race here. He's gonna make it three twenty. And this is the, where Mike's advantage is. If yeah. Mike keeps bluffing and keeps betting his real hands, exactly this is why right, he gets paid. Dave. This is why, you know, even though he might have, could have made more money slow playing, and he's actually going to re-raise. Even though, like, you know, the 1 or 2% where he could, you know, somebody could slow play, if he m makes his bets consistent with his good and his bad hands, he's going to get somebody like Amir to check race here with a black 10-4. Yeah. i got to say, I really like Mike's play tonight. Yeah. I mean, it's not a play. He doesn't play the way I would play, obviously. He, plays way more way more hands than I would play or you would play. Right. But at least he's playing them hard. But remember last week though he was doing the opposite and that and that's what drove us nuts, oh. right? Oh. It looks like there's a poll here set up by Kev Mouth on two plus two. Who at the live at the bike table has the who has played the best tonight? So you can submit your vote there. Now we're, I haven't seen any amazing plays, to be honest. Yeah. Usually we see some really great calls or great bluffs. Yeah. Better than Ace Jack. I'm picking up a ton of hats. Look at this surfing a line I put. Jesus, Dave and Tuck have some really bad short-term memories. Jeff Klein equals surf on a line eye. Oh, okay. Oh. See, I knew I recognized the name. And did you get that little jest in there? Dave and Tuck have some short yeah. memories. I got it. Look at this. Mike's got pocket aces this time. And I believe he raised, and Joe called with Jack Nine. And let's see if Joe tries to make a move here on Mike. This well, is unbelievable. Mike bets 400. Joe's done this before. I mean, Mike is just betting his good hands and his bad hands. He's not going to show it. Great. Good play, Mike. Don't show. As funny as things, I'm sitting there going, Jeff Klein, Jeff Klein, Jeff Klein. Oh, yeah, he was the one that played uh, in that game, but obviously. I'm getting, well, old. I'm getting no, old. He was in the limit game. No, I know. He was in the 6-12 game yeah, on yeah. Monday. Well, congratulations to Jeff Klein for coming in second place last night, then. He said he has a uh, little... I'll tell you, old age. He's got a multi-table setup. He's watching the Lakers game, playing an uh, tr uh, internet tournament, and watching live with the bike. What a great setup. Clearly not married. Here we go. Mike's going to raise it up again. This is, what, six or seven times in a row now? Yeah. Deuce four off suit this time. And Moe's got ace queen on the button. Let's see if Moe yeah. re-raises so There used here. to be a joke. I mean, Stu Younger used to sit down and raise it 12, 13 times in a row. Now, I'm not comparing Mike to Stu Younger. I didn't call you. And this is the way to play it. And Mike's just going to get away from it. And Mike will throw it away. Yeah, and uh, Mike said he caught me this time. But if you look at the if you look at the net gain of the last like four or five hands that he's raised, he's won like four out of the last five hands. You know what if Mo? I mean, what if Mike had picked up pocket queens, pocket kings, or pocket aces that hand? Right. Mo would have done the same thing, and obviously oh. Mike would have had him. And that's why that's why he gets the action. That's why he gets paid off. And look at this, another one from Desiree Churchwell. My sister is right. George is hot. She just emailed me a link. Where do I sign up? The man is fine. Poetry in motion. Wow. Well, if you want to come down to the Bicycle Casino, we are in Bell. There he is. We are in Bell Gardens, about ten miles south of Los Angeles. Yeah. And we know that these are real, e real emails because any guy that would be posing as a woman, you know, and th that's a little sketchy there, you know, hitting on George. Well, George is a sexy, sexy man. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> don't short him. Come on, he's he's kind of like he's like half English and he calls himself a Greek poker god. A seven six here and a Mo is bet here on second pair, and he's going to take it down. It looks like. Take it down, Mo. Wow. Getting word that Mo is just rebought in for another three thousand dollars. Well, maybe he wants to cover Mike. He thinks Mike's been going a little bit out of line here. Yeah. Well, and Max also next to him on the right has about five thousand dollars. A little bit more than that, actually. Yeah, actually, Max got over six thousand dollars. And again. I don't think that Max has necessarily played the best tonight. I don't think he is the best player tonight. Oh. But he but he's won the most money though. Well, I mean, hey, it helps when your ace queen beats ace king. Right, right. You know, you catch a runner, runner flush with ace king of hearts. Oh my God. And then don't maximize your value on it. 
He's got a raise there by Han, and he's going to take it down. So like he's had king queen. I mean, the interesting yeah. thing is, if you play poker for a living and you watch play, po poker players play, the best player rarely wins the most money. Right. Because they're not in there gambling that much. The best players usually just win. They win more often than not. And they consistently win. They also lose less when they lose. While a bad player will, you know, he gets lucky once in a while and he wins a lot of money. But when he loses, he might give away it all. Ace Jack for Max there. Ace Jack of Spades. And it, it gets limped around here. Yeah, he just limped there. And we're going to see, looks like five-way action here. So $100 pot. A6-3 with a couple of hearts. So Max has picked up top pair. But look at this. Tommy's got a flush draw in seat one. Let's see how Tommy plays it. He's in position. Max bets. If Tommy raises here, does he think he commands the respect to get somebody off of a hand? But he's just going to call. Well, he's in position. I think, I want to say he only bet $60. Yeah, it was a $60 bet. Allen calls with 6-9. Backdoor club draw. Yeah, he's in bad shape, Allen, obviously. Pot's about 250 here. Turns a king. Now Tommy's got a pair. Now does he push here on the turn? Still doesn't have the exact made hand. But look at that. No, I mean, you know what? He Max is Max is pricing Tommy in. Bets 100 into a $250 pot, and Tommy calls. Pot is now about 450, and the river is a three. Yeah, uh, Tommy just gave up there, Dave. I don't. I don't necessarily. I'm a huge fan of. Well, what we mean? Uh, he's got a pair of kings. I no, understand. yeah. I mean, I, I don't mind that play at all. Yeah. To be honest with you, I got. I, I gotta, feel like you know sometimes you can use. He could have used his image there on the turn to put a pretty hefty raise in there and maybe get. I mean, the pot was limped around. You yeah. don't necessarily put somebody on ace jack there. Yeah, I got to be honest with you. I actually love the way Tommy played the hand, and I, I, not that I'm. I don't want to blow smoke up Tommy's ass here. But to be honest <laughs> with you, the pot was 280. Okay, and the guy bets 100 into the pot. I'd rather limp in. Maybe I keep in. Uh, maybe I keep Allen in there too, and I'm getting the odds with the implied odds. Also, if I hit my flush. Now, if the guy bets a little bit more, well, then I've got a decision to make. But the guy only bet a hundred. He's pricing me in, especially well, to with take the, the other side odds. of that. I mean, he he's only betting that he's uncomfortable with his hand. So you know, intend you, you call there on the turn. You don't make your draw, and you just check it down. He's uncomfortable with his hand, but you've let him get there in, in essence, or you've right. You've well, let you him understand. check it down. Let me ask you this though. Well, Once we, Tommy picks up the king, and we'll get Al Cock in a second. Now Mike Hare has uh, he has raised here from the button. Ace eight suited. He's made it ninety to go. There are a bunch of limpers in there, and he's thinned the field down to two others. So two hundred and forty dollars. Yep. Plus the limpers, so over two fifty. Ten six deuce here with a couple of diamonds. Amir's got a gut shot. No one yeah. really has anything. Yeah, here. Mike's still got the best hand. He's high, huh? But Max is going to bet right in here. Fifty. He bets fifty, Dave. Like I said, into about a two fifty or three hundred dollar pot. Amir calls, and Mike calls. Pot's now about four hundred. Turns another ten. How does Amir call that? Seven nine with the gut shot. Yeah, gut shot. Gut shot with two diamonds out there. Everybody checks here on the turn, and the river is a queen. And now Max does have the best hand. And now he doesn't bet because he doesn't need to. But Amir's going to bet on his busted draw. How much is the bet there? He's going to bet 700 into a $500 pot. Let's play this hand back in our heads here, Dave. The turn, the top pair paired on the turn. Nobody bet. And now Amir smooth called the flop. And now he's over bet the river. Could he have been slow playing a 10 there? He's bet 700 I mean, here. he could have had a weak 10 and been scared of a bigger 10, and then when the max checks to him, he goes, oh, well, my 10 is good. I'm going to bet it for value. Like, like something like 10, 7, 10, 8 or something? Yeah, I mean, 10, 9, something like that. I'm, I'm just trying to... I just don't buy it, though, three ways. I mean, you're scared that someone else has a 10. I mean, that's what well, I'm saying just, in my head if I'm max. Right, it's just I don't odd, put the though, guy on a 10. You're just looking at it going, well, what did he call me with? He either called me with diamonds or a 10, right? That's what you probably think. Or something like eight nine or seven nine, but he's on a totally yeah, he's totally busted here, and the bet here is seven hundred. I mean seven nine would actually really surprise me on a flop like that. Yeah, pot is about twelve hundred. It's seven hundred to call. Just there doesn't you know there's not unless he had flopped a set also on the flop. I mean that's the other thing too, right? Maybe he flopped a set. Yeah, and what? But he's slow playing it with two diamonds out there. No. 
It's odd. Well, we see that all the time. Huh? So, again, and then Max is going to make the call. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. know, Max pieced it together. It didn't make much sense to him, and he's going to pay him off. Obviously, not pay him off. He's going to win the pot. Amir's got nine high. Amir shows a bluff. Wow, I haven't seen Amir bluff this much in a long time. I think, I mean, Amir, I think Amir was trying to sweat that guy a little bit because Max called and immediately turned his cards over. Yeah. And then Amir stood up and then went to turn his cards over and did. Right. But obviously it was no good. Right. I mean, but that gives you a little bit of jolt there if you're Queen Jack. Oh, well, of course. up and he's going to turn his cards over. Well, if the guy's actually turning his cards over, I'm, 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 I hate my hands. Right. You know, normally people just muck. Um, back to that last time, I got I got to talk about that. See, to me, when Tommy picks up the king, also with his heart yeah. draw, if he raises, what's going to call? Only a hand that beats him. Right. I mean, only an ace. I. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, the more I think about it, the more I love the way he played it. And look at Mike. Mike has flopped the full house. This is one of the rare times that I don't mind slow playing it, hoping somebody has diamonds. Well, he's going to bet. It. Okay, that works too. I mean, there's no way. I mean, you look at George here. George actually called. And Alan calls, and they're both drawing dead. Do you think that Mike actually went back and watched that we ripped him last week? Because he has totally changed his game around tonight. And you look at this. George and Alan actually think they're drawing live. Well, the turn's a six. Wow, and now George. And look, now Mike checks. I like the play. I yeah. like the play, because now you want him to get there. And everybody checks, and it's a diamond. Oh, uh, now, now you almost want to overbet the flop. You almost want to yeah. overbet it, hoping somebody got there. Right. I mean, that's a great card for Mike there. And he's going to bet. He's going to bet 200 here. Yeah, I mean, to me, you almost want to overbet it because the only guy who's going to call you is somebody who hit diamonds. Right. Or somebody who has an ace. And if they, if they have that, they're going to pay you off the whole way anyway. And Mike shows a four. He shows a four. And you know that the Greek poker god is going to be going back and looking at this hand on the archives. Yeah. Great play by Mike. I mean, I really like yeah. the way he played that hand. Bet it. I was going to say, God, you can slow play it and let somebody get there. But he bet it, which is a great play. George you calls just love Alan it when calls. anybody fast plays, don't you? Generally speaking, yeah. I mean, because nobody ever gives you credit for it. Right. Obviously, George is going to take one off and he puts a guy on an ace. Oh, right. you have diamonds? What the hell are you calling with, Alan? Yeah, and here's yeah, that. Yeah. I thought you had diamonds. What the hell are you calling with? And then now Mike says he flopped a full house. And Mike is going to bet here. And that's why actually one of those times where I wouldn't mind if Mike actually showed that hand. Because it still continues to go towards his, uh, you know, his whole mojo. That he's, he, I might have a great hand or I might have a crappy hand. Right. I'm going to bet regardless. And that's the scary thing about him. Yeah. You never know what he has. Now Mike is checked here. Now look at this. Mike kind of cagey. I mean, he raised pre-flop, didn't bet on the flop, kind of like he sensed it. Allen bet and, and Mike folded. And the funny thing is, is that if Allen didn't have an ace there, Mike knows Allen well enough. Then Allen would have just checked right, checked right behind him. Right. And Mike could have bet the turn, bet him off on the turn. Mm -hmm. It's almost like free information. Like, yeah. I check. If you bet, I know you have it. If I check and you check behind me, I can just bet you off on right. the turn. Well, Allen rarely uses his position to his advantage. Oh. We've got a new setup here, Dave. I mean, you know, you know what's funny? I'm going to just throw this last, and then I'm going to leave it and alone and I'm not going to talk about it again but that last hand with Tommy Huffnagel was the king two right king two of hearts and Max has ace jack space it actually reminds me of a hand way back when when Kathy Liebert had the nut flush draw and a guy threw a little dinky bet in there and we were thinking wow can he can, can Kathy raise and Kathy didn't raise she took the free card right. and then caught the heart and ended up breaking the guy and um, the, we asked her, said, why didn't you raise that? And she goes, well, the guy gave me such a good price to go for my draw. I said, why wouldn't I go for it? Because it, it's kind of one of those things where, yeah, I can take the pot away and I can win a small pot, but if I hit my hearts, I might win a huge pot. Right. And maybe that's what Tommy was thinking, too. Well, we haven't really heard much from Corp, uh, from uh, Action Joe Wynn, Dave. Alan, why did you call the flop with it when it was ace-ace-four, two diamonds? I want to, yeah. Straight bra. Straight draw. <laughs> you should be asking that to George there in C5 too, Mike. You'd be amazed, right? <laughs> now we got a raise here by Han. We haven't, he hasn't played much. He's going to make it 2.30 to go, Dave. I think he's got 5-3 of hearts. Wow. He's on the button. 
Yeah, he hasn't sure. played a hand all day. I mean, you got to give him some credit for a hand, don't you? Joe has pocket sevens. He's going to fold. Mike's got jack ten off suit. And he's asking him how much he has left. <laughs> Mike's not really thinking about this, is he? Well, maybe Mike, well, maybe Mike thinks that the bet was a little large and maybe he can get him off the hand. Maybe he's got something like pocket sixes or pocket fives. I mean, the, it would either be re-raise or fold here, right? I mean... You'd imagine you're not going to call with right. Jack Ten off suit. The guy only has 900 left. Yeah, and he's going to move all in. He's going to re-raise all in. Wow! And, and, and it's a great play. If we can see what Hunt has. Did he pick up a tail on Hunt? Apparently so. I mean, he picked up a tail on Hunt. What a great raise! I was about to say, you know, Mike plays best when he's re-raising. Right. And there it is. And that has got to be the play of the day so far. Yeah. Wow! What a play by Mike. You know, it's funny. Um, I thought that Tommy Hoffnagel was in the lead there, but... Uh, I mean, it, it's close, but to me, I mean, i got to tell you, if I had to vote right now, and we still got a good 15 minutes left in our show, to me, Mike has been the player of the day. He's yeah. been running this table over. He's made a couple of very questionable calls. Um, betting his good hands, betting his bad hands. Yeah, but, I mean, he's also winning tonight, and he's made a couple of great plays, and that was one of, that was great play. Made a complete read on, read on Hunt and stole the pot away with Jack High. <laughs> Tells me he had two kings. <laughs> and uh, we're going to see this pot limped around. King Jack Jack here. And Moe's going to check his, uh, his trip jacks from up front. And Allen takes the free card. He's got a straight draw. Turn is a six. And I think that Mike Corporation might just want a prop bet from George in seat five. Because George just gave him 100 bucks there. What, to show him what he had that last hand? No, I think it was uh, regarding with the flop. Oh, Just okay. Flop prop bets. I got you. They yeah. have. Now, Hunt has bet here 150. He checked the flop in position with top pair. And Mo, you know, checked trip jacks. Let's see what he's going to do now. He's going to check raise. Well, I got to tell you, I might check raise Hunt here with anything. Would you even buy that he had a king? I mean, he checked it in position on the flop. Right. And maybe Hun doesn't want to get uh, pushed around here. Is he going to call this? Well, I mean, he just get, did get pushed around. Again, you can't really have a short memory in poker, Dave. Leave your ego at the door. I mean, if he feels like he's getting pushed around, he can't affect his play. Because if it affects him this hand, he's going to lose his whole stack. And in this case, all he can beat is a, is a complete bluff. Right, and not even a real king. Right. Yeah. But, I mean, hey, you know what? You gotta, if you have top pair on the button and it gets checked to you, why not throw a little money in there and see where you're at? Well, it looks like Syracuse is getting, the, getting it, an amazing 35 points against Notre Dame tomorrow. I'll take Syracuse. Is that at the Carrier Dome or is that at Notre Dame? Hmm. I don't know. I don't even know. Off the top of my head. I would have thought it would be more if it was at Notre Dame. <laughs> Must be at home. Oh, wow. Moe's got pocket aces this time on the button. Amir's, Amir's got, got ace queen. Yeah. And George has raised it up with queen. Is that queen seven of clubs? Yeah, queen seven of clubs. Well, the queen of hearts. I'm sorry. It's queen seven off. Queen, or, yeah, queen seven off suit. And Max has got ace jack. He's going to call, and let's see what Mo does here. Oh, there's enough money in this pot. Mo should really make this almost four hundred dollars. Well, let's see if he's going to re-raise. He's going to make it two ninety. Two ninety. Okay, she so raised it up two hundred dollars more. Well, it just seems like every time George chooses to raise with rags, he gets come over the top. And Amir quickly calls, quickly with ace queen. Uh, and, and, and all of the aces are dead here. And how do you call with ace queen out of position? A raise and a re-raise. Yeah, that is uh, a very big pre-flop mistake there. I mean, Amir didn't even think twice. He called. We saw. We actually saw Diablo make that lay down on a, on a Friday night game a couple weeks ago. Yeah, it's it's just it's an easy lay down. And here, if you're Max, it's another easy lay down. Ace yeah. jack off suit. You got a raise and a re. Wow. And he calls. And, and Moe's in great shape here. Yeah. He doesn't know what great shape he's in. Pot's about nine hundred dollars here. Here we go. Three ways. Huh, three, five, seven. Yeah, you'd almost rather have that case ace come out. Six hundred. And Mo's gonna bet six hundred, about two thirds the size of the pot. 
Now, Amir has the ace of spades, so he has a runner, runner, spade possibility. It's a nice bet here by Mo. But this is the problem with calling with ace, queen, off suit. What are you trying to hit out of position? I mean, if you hit an ace, you don't even know if it's any good because guy could have ace, king. And if you hit a queen and you're up against, I mean, and then what, if you don't hit, then you're just going to fold? Well, the pot is 1,500, 600 to call. Max is by far, you know, has the most chips on the table right now. I don't really know what he's thinking. Well, sometimes you just look at the pot and you go, man, there's so much money in the pot. I can't let this go. Max is almost drawing dead here. He's going to need runner, runner, jacks. Running jacks, right? Yeah. Or some sort of, uh, like, 6-4 type straight to chop it up. Chop a chop chop. And again, when a guy thinks this long, I think it's a tell that if he makes, if he then makes a move at you, he doesn't have anything to hit. Because sometimes, like, if someone's going to check raise you, like, say he had flopped a set, like, he'll think about it and then he'll make a raise. But this guy, he seems like he's kind of toiling over it. You right. know what I mean? It's kind of like what we saw when Joe. Action Joe win, check raise Diablo a couple weeks ago. With After nothing. thinking about it for like three minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After, you know. I actually kind of want to use that. I want to use that because you pointed it out to me, and I'm like, you know what? You're 100% right. The next time I have the nuts, I think I might take three minutes with it and then right. raise. Right, yeah. <laughs> like really, really take a while, right? With yeah. The, yeah. Well, sometimes I like to do the reverse tell. You know, a lot of times like when you act strong, you're actually weak. So a lot of times I like to, like, if I have the nuts, I'll actually move my chips in really quick acting strong, and somebody will think, oh, he's, he can't have it. But maybe I'll do it the opposite way. I'll throw that in there. A little live straddle here by Corporation Mike, seat four. Live straddle is just a double big bet here, double blind, so another blind. And the and straddle is live here. Yes, at exactly. The bank. So Mike gets to act last. And it's $40 now. Look at this, Mo, he had pocket aces last time. He's got pocket kings this hand. Wow. Now, does anybody have a hand there to play with him, though? Well, Max is, looks like, is he limped in? And Mo, Mo just limps in. I think Mo's counting on Corp... Uh, yeah, Mo thinks that Corporation Mike might raise out of the straddle well, spot here. Without a doubt. Without a That's doubt. That's what he's counting on. That's what he's playing for. No, but he's not going to get it, though. He's not going to get the limp re-raise. But that's the only reason why Mo didn't raise with kings there. Definitely. Flop comes jack, 7-5 here. Now, nobody's hit a jack. Well, you wonder if maybe somebody would have got trapped. Again, you've got to put that feeler bet out. If you play it the big pair with the limp re-raise and you don't get the raise, you still got to figure out where you're at. And Mo's right. going to bet 300 And you don't want to take too much heat, obviously. Right. This is interesting here. Mo's bet 300. Now, the problem is that, that Joe is in the blind. Joe could have anything. Right. And I think this is going to get thrown away, and Mo's going to win at the end with a hand. And he is. Well, that is exactly why Mo limped in with Kings, because he's not in early position. He only had a couple people to act, but he thinks no. that Mike, you know, Mike is liable to raise out of that straddle spot at least 50% of the time. Yeah, right? and we often criticize players for limping in in late position with a big pair, you know, because and, but only because they're not paying attention to the players that are in the big blind. But in that case, Mo did it for a reason. He really thought Corporation Mike might re-raise it. I didn't raise just because of you. No, really. Nice straddle? Yeah. I wish I picked up two aces in the straddle. What is it? Half time going into the What is that? Still going to Um. Okay, big blind, <coughs> Four players. Four-way action here, limped around. Amir has top pair. And Joe has top pair, too, but he's in kicker trouble. 100. No, can't. And Joe is going to call there with top pair, weak kicker. Now, remember, these two went at it before when uh, Joe ended up making a straight at the end, turns a queen. Amir's going to bet 400 now. And this is one of those cases, if you're Joe, now what can you beat? The guy had a queen, you can't beat the queen. If the guy has a king, you really can't beat a king. Yeah. 
you know, all you can beat is like Jack 10. I was still always up in the air with Joe. This is really a, a bread and butter can for me, Dave. If he calls here, I, I just I can't. I lose a lot of respect, or I'm still trying to figure him out. Because I got to say, like you said, a good player. I, I just don't think they can. And he's going to make the call. Did he make the call? Yeah, he made. The, oh wait, excuse me. Oh, he's showing the king. And he's going to fold. Well, there you go. Okay. What was he throwing the chip at? I don't know. Pretty odd. But you know, he just top pair weak kicker, second pair now pairs. Well, you, you, know, can, you can beat board, Diamonds and you can beat Jack-10, yeah, that's it. Yeah, the board it. really isn't all that draw-heavy. I mean, do you really want to take that much heat with King-3? And the pot was limped around. We're not talking about a lot of money in the pot. You know. Another chip count here. Well, Max, upwards of $8,000. Wow, look at Max go. Now, Mike is down a little bit since the last chip count. Mo. I think he rebought, and he's also won a few hands. He's up to 3,700. Now George also bought in for more. Yeah, Mo, George is actually down about a thousand dollars or 900 on a day. I think Mo has more like maybe, maybe 5,000 now. Now we got seven-way action here, Dave. Limped around. A couple Ace of players have nine. aces. George and Max both have aces. Pretty weak aces at that. So a bet here by seat number seven, Hun, open-ended straight draw, bet 170. And Max looks like he just called with the ace deuce. Again, with all those people behind you, it's a surprising call. My God. Turns a deuce. It's a third diamond, though. Yeah, now, Hun's got more outs there. A diamond also would give him a win. Well, Hun checks. And now Max is going to bet. And is Hun going to call this now? He's got open-ended with a 10 of diamonds. But he could be drawing dead if, if, if Max had diamonds. Well, let's see how much the bet is here by seed 8. Looks like it's a $200 bet. And he's going to call. There you go. He makes the call. And the river is in eight. Well, that, that counterfeits Max's two pair. Let's see if it just gets checked down here. Yep, it's going to yeah, get checked down. At that point, I don't mind checking that down if you have the ace. Because you can't beat an eight now. You can't even beat an ace, really. Yeah. And uh, we do appreciate the poll there by Kevin. Matt. Between that poll and our email votes, we'll be able to uh, figure out who is the big winner right. of uh, Best Player of the Night Award. Last Friday. Live straddle here. And it's a pretty close race between Tommy Huffnagel and Corporation Mike, so please get your votes in. Email us at liveatthebike.com, or you can uh, vote on 2 plus 2, the unofficial VIP night poll. We're going to take this one all the way to the wire, Dave, so we won't yeah, announce it. Yeah, it's real close yet. right now. Right. Now we have a straddle here and a raise by Mo for 130. Jack eight of clubs here. Pocket and, tens, uh, huh, for Allen? Yeah, he's going to call. And C2 calls with ace queen. So Mo is the original razor. Here we go, three ways, about a $400 pot. Ten, four, nine. Now Mo's open ended, but Allen's got, he's got a set of tens. And of course he checks it. Well, he might, uh, see, I'm wondering, is he going to check raise or just smooth call? Now, how does, what is Amir going to do with ace queen? He's going to raise Mo. Oh, wow. Well, now Allen's just going to go all in. Oh, yeah, it's a no-brainer for Allen. Well, now, though, is this going to price Mo in? The pot was 400 before that. Mo bets 300, 700, 1,300 there when Amir raises. And now Allen moves all in for another six to 700. So let's see. It's actually pot 950. Size. It's about a $2,100 pot, 950 for Mo to call. 950 more? Yeah. Because he's in there for that's 300 actually, already. Actually, it's 650. You're right. So the pot is, I think, I think the pot's about two thousand 
And six, uh, so he's getting, 650 to call. Well, yeah. see, he's getting more than 3 to 1 on his money. Right. And Allen's already all in. Right. So it might be a worthwhile call here. So well, Allen had to go with $5,000. Amir $5, raised, though. So you've got to deal with Amir. You know, if... I don't think... This doesn't open... Allen pushing all in does not open it up to re-raising. No, it does not. But remember, if Mo calls, Amir can push him out with one card. He's now, not going to see two right, cards. Right. Mo could re-raise now. Right. He could do that. He can re-raise. But, uh... Amir cannot. Right. See, I think with Allen all in, mm -hmm. I think it's more likely that you'll get to see both cards. And I like the call here. You're getting more than three to one for Why, your you money. Why, you think Amir would just check it? He's he showed flop strength. He raised Moe's bet on the flop. You know what I mean? On the, on, on the right. turn, you would think that, you know. But Amir might think he's dead by Allen anyway. Well, maybe. Well, that's what's going through. It's an interesting hand. Yeah, I mean, if I'm only getting two to one on my money, I'd probably throw it away. But getting he's going to make the call. Yeah, six fifty to win two thousand. I mean, that's more than three to well, one. Well, Amir was making a bluff, so he might just fold here for the yeah. extra money. Well, actually, I guess it's not. Well, well, he makes the call. Wow. He got a thousand dollar chip there. I mean, he only has ace queen. How does he call that? I don't know. How do you call it? Ace That's queen? amazing. Now this is going to be some interesting side action here, Dave. The pot's about twenty-eight or twenty-nine hundred. The turn's a four. Now this Let's is one of those times where it makes no sense for a mere or Mo. And they bet. checked it down, and the river is a seven, and Mo gets there. Yeah. But look at this. Allen's got a full house though, and now you know Mo's going to bet with his straight, but Allen's going to take down the main with the full yeah. house. And I was going to say on the turn, it makes no sense for a mere or Mo to bet because neither one of them has anything. And they'd only be protecting Allen's hand. And obviously, Allen's hand needed no protection. Well, we're getting word, Dave, that we're going to see uh, the last hand of the night. And I want to... Uh, we've tallied the votes on the, uh, on the Internet, Dave, and through our emails. And even though it looked like Tommy Huffnagel was uh, a, sh a little bit of a winner on the thread. We've had a lot more emails from Corporation Mike. Uh, looks you like know. the total right now is coming in. Mike's got 14 votes, and Tommy Huffnagel with all that 11. Yeah. So it so. looks like Corporation Mike is going to win. There you go. In our inaugural Best Player of the Night award. That's right. Winner gets the Paul McCartney tickets. Now we're going to see five-way action here. I think Mike really played well, Dave. That would be my choice as well. Yeah, I mean, Mike, Mike, Mike played probably the best I've seen him play in at least two or three months. Two ten. Well, Mike's going to bet here. He's got queen nine. He's going to bet two ten. George is going to call with a flush draw in between. Wow, all in. And Hun. Hun's going to check raise with jack nine. But he's got no money. Actually, you know, I think he's just calling. I think that's all he has. Now, who raised this pre-flop? How are you in there? I don't understand yeah. play here. I mean, if you've only got two hundred dollars left, what do you just want to give the two hundred dollars away? Now, George and Mike both call, and the turns a heart, and George gets there. Yeah. Well, George has got to bet here on the side, right? Because he can't let Mike get there for free with a dangling heart that's higher than his five, right? Yeah, Isn't exactly. this a mandatory bet on the oh, side? Oh, definitely, definitely. Well, the whole point of calling was to get the implied odds. Yeah. But look at that. Mike throws it away like it was nothing. Right. And he only had second pair. But Hunt is still drawing live. He could catch a heart here. Right. But the river is a five. And he's going to take it down. George takes it down. And that's going to do it for us tonight. A well, pretty exciting night for Live well, Bike, huh? After that, uh, right after the show, we're going to go out and congratulate seat four. Corporation Mike for being our best player of the night. Best player of the night. So that's going to wrap up another week of Live at the Bike. Stay tuned for uh, our show on Monday. I'll give you a little bit of a tease. It is going to be a form of heads-up poker yes. in a team format. So we're going to see several heads-up matches in a team format. Yeah, no limit hold'em heads-up tournament. Right. And uh, make sure you tune in at 6 p.m. And I will uh, p.m. Uh, Kev Math. Uh, you know, closer to the time of the show, describing some of the rules and stuff, so you can read about it on the thread on Monday. So everyone for here in the booth, and for David Tuckman, I'm Bart Hansen. Good night, everybody, from Live at the Bike. It's here. It's big. And it's closer than you think. It's not a tournament. It's what you don't see on TV. The cash is real. The stakes are high. They bet big. They win big, they lose big. High stakes live action poker. 
live at the bike. Watch it live on the web or play it if you dare at the Bicycle Casino right here in Los Angeles.